Carhart, overflowing with Cal football fans, making the Seminole Bowl a de facto home game. But the Miami Hurricane faithful are here too, believing this is the start of something big. It's an East Coast, West Coast primetime showdown of tradition-rich programs. Welcome to the 2008 Emerald Bowl, part of ESPN's presentation of Capital One Bowl Week. Tonight, the young ACC upstarts from South Florida have ventured west. Miami takes on one of the most talented teams from the Pac-10, the Cal Golden Bears. And with their campus just 12 miles away, over the bridge, the Sea of Blue and Gold. What a reception for the Cal Bears. Everybody, I'm Joe Tessitore, and I welcome you to this much-anticipated Emerald Bowl game, and it's intriguing. You got the veteran, well-skilled Cal team against the young upside of Miami. Let me bring in my partner, Rod Gilmore. Boy, Miami making a lot of headlines recently. Second-year head coach Randy Shannon setting those high standards of discipline. Suspended five players, Rod, among them quarterback Robert Marr. Yeah, you know, you don't lose an 11-game start at quarterback without it having an impact on your team. This guy was having a really fine first-year season. You see the numbers there, nine touchdown passes, and he's an athletic guy. He could make plays with his feet. So he was really important to this team. But a lot of Miami fans actually preferred the backup to Corey Harris. He had a great freshman season, 1,000 yards passing, and he's a very athletic quarterback as well. A lot of confidence in this young man. He expects to have a big ball game. Well, Cal fans know all about a two-quarterback system, and the senior quarterback, Nate Longshore, is going to get the start tonight. But their offense, is all about one of the most dynamic and fastest players in college football, running back Javid Best. Yeah, I think he's the most explosive running back in all of college football. He is just a highlight reel waiting to happen. Get this, eight times this season, he's broken off a run for 50 yards or more. This guy, 1,400 yards rushing this season, pretty quietly, without most of the country recognizing this. This guy is incredibly fast, incredibly quick, powerful, and he is the focus of everything Cal does offensively. And Cal fans also know that this game is filled with many search and destroy speed burning linebackers. Among them, Cal's Pac-10 first teamer Zach Follett is wired up. Thanks, thanks coming back today, baby. One last, one last stop. We got some big boys up front. I'm about to smash them. Smash them, dog. My last game. I don't care about my body. Bah! Oh, I can't wait for that. Nothing lateral. We go downhill and smash them dudes in the mouth. JB. Best game of the season right here. Best game of the season. Dominate the dude. Run all over them on national television. Time to bring that pain train, baby. Time to bring that pain train, baby. Let's go. Woo! Woo! And you'll be enjoying it on ESPN and ESPN. HD this telecast is available and we welcome you to the seventh playing of the Emerald Bowl a game easily recognized by the ballpark it is played in famous as home to the Major League Baseball San Francisco Giants but once a year reconfigured for college football and that means some unique circumstances for the teams to deal with our Quint Kesnick joins us with more on that Quint. Yo, you got two teams and one sideline. This would be standard if it were basketball, hockey, soccer, or lacrosse, but it's unique for football. Right now, I'm standing in no man's land. This is a 10-yard strip. You got Cal to my left, Miami to my right. When you talk to the coaches about this configuration, they have two things that concern them. First, substitutions. Can they get their players on the field in a timely fashion? The second would be communicating with the officials. Can they get their attention to initiate a challenge? You know, you take a record rectangular field you put it in a baseball stadium and we've created some really awkward angles the left end zone is directly against the left field wall here at this baseball stadium there's about a yard from the end zone to the wall Joe I don't think we're gonna be seeing too many deep fade routes into that end zone no it uh, reminds me of arena football here fitting this football field into this stadium but it's part of the charm head coach Randy Shannon his second year leading the way for the Kings he was the D cord for six years, also a linebacker on Miami's national title team back in 87. 
Jeff Tedford, two time Pac 10 coach of the year, took over a one win team when he got the job, and he's averaging over eight wins a year. That's the best in school history. So Cal won the toss, and they will accept. And Matt Bosher will kick off to the very dangerous Jabba Best and Jeremy Ross. And this is a short kick that is picked up and fielded at the 37 yard line. Let's take a look back at this Rod. Well you know kick it away from job at best. They don't want to take the risk of kicking the ball deep but you have a kicker flipping as well. That's Bosher flipping down and that ball winds up at about the 37 yard line. Pretty good field position for California. And the Cal offense ready to take the field and they will do so with senior quarterback Nate Longshore he earned the start through his solid practices this month. But he's been on a roller coaster ride through his career. Fifth all time at Cal for passing yards. Yet has been in and out of the lineup for two years with sophomore Kevin Riley getting plenty of starts. Long short of pass here on first down. And that is incomplete off the fingertips of Jeremy Ross. Well, the California offense is at the top of your screen. It's an offense that's, that really has relied on the running game and job at best. The quarterback position has been, at best, inconsistent this year, whether Nate Longshore has been the quarterback or Kevin Riley, who's had more starts than Longshore. They've really had trouble with accuracy, as you just saw in that first play. Longshore with three starts on the year, nine touchdowns, four interceptions, and now working out of the gun. And the first carry of the game for Javid Best, he is swallowed up immediately by Glenn Cook. That's a loss of four. And at the top of your screen again is the Miami defense, and this is a, a very young defense, a defense that is known for playing young players and having some speed out there. You see Cook out there and Sean Spence, the freshman linebacker. His defense has not been very good against the run lately, but a little bit is skewed with having placed, faced a Georgia Tech team that runs the option and chews up everybody. So Longshore facing an early third and long. Line to make is just over the 47. And that is incomplete. A fine defensive play by Chavez Grant. It was intended for Ross again. But Grant, who's a team captain, with his seventh pass broken up on the year. Yeah, just watch to the left of your screen. Just great coverage. Longshore gets his ball out, but watch Grant. Right hand in there. That's the perfect way to do it. Keep the back hand free so that you can still wrap the guy up and make the tackle if you have to. So Brian Anger on to punt for Cal. Red Cooper lets it bounce, and it is down at the 32. So with the suspension of Robert Marr, true freshman Ja'Cory Harris is the starter for the second time this year. And all he knows is winning, Rod. He led Miami's Northwestern High to a national title. And he told me yesterday, I said, when was the last time you lost a game? He said, as a starter, I said, yeah. He said, seventh grade. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, talking to him this week, could he have been more relaxed and more confident about this opportunity. Well, well they say ignorance is bliss. Yeah, you don't know the yeah. spot you're in, a young man in a spot like this. <laughs> he said, yeah, Cal's defense is good. He said, but, you know, I, I don't feel any pressure. I just go play. He is cool and calm. And to pass now on first down, setting up the screen to Cooper. And Greg Cooper is taken down right away by Zach Follett. That's a loss of five. Top of your screen is the California defensive lineup. It is a defense that is a lot faster than people realize. They play a 3-4 scheme, and the linebackers are the strength of that defense. They've been very, very good this season, but they don't get much notoriety because USC's defense is all world. Very talented core, speedy and fast. And they switched that 3-4, and it served them well. Now Cooper out of the eye and just trying to get back to that original line of scrimmage. Now look at the impact players here for the Miami offense. Well, it starts with the running game. Greg Cooper has led that team in rushing the last two seasons. He'll be a big factor for them tonight. He'll get some help, though, from Javaris James. Yeah, kind of a tough runner inside. Really helps their rushing attack. 
and then the tight end position has become an issue for Miami. Chris Zellner gets the start. Dietrich Epps is out of the ball game with an injury, and Richard Gordon is suspended. So they're down on tight ends for this ball game. Third and ten for the true freshman. Harris. And that was almost intercepted as he was trying to get it out there to the speedy wide receiver. But Tony Felder, the final linebacker, dropping back into coverage and getting in front of Sam Shields. Well, Miami's not going to make a lot of yardage on third and long against this California defense. They love playing five defensive backs. When they get to their nickel package, they are very, very difficult to move the ball against. So Matt Bosher, the team MVP, does it all kicking for the Canes. And Sid Quan Thompson, very dangerous return man. He's going to let this one bounce. Thinks about fielding it for a moment, but then it harmlessly goes out of bounds. 40-yard punt for the Canes. And Longshore and company look back to business here in the Emerald Bowl. Is Jeff Tedford, the Cal head coach, who's led Cal to six straight bowl games. That's a school record. The impact players for his offense starts with the main man at running back. Well, you see what he's done with the highlight reel, 50 yards plus eight times, but 500 plus yards rushing the last two ball games. Part of the reason is Alex Mack, three-time first-team All-American and the Grady Award winner. Great player, smart athlete as well. And then at the tight end spot, Cameron Mora, he, he's a guy that can really be effective in the passing game for California. Has as many catches as any wide receiver on the team. And he set the school record for the most touchdowns by a tight end. So Nate Longshore back out there. Both defenses looking sharp on the first two series of this game. Best back in the eye. And here is Javid Best. And he breaks free from the initial tackle. And a little glimpse of the shake and bake of Javid Best. He was taken down by Ryan Hill, but a gain of eight. Well, you know, you hear about his speed, and you don't think about him being a physical runner. But he's a lot tougher than you think. He can break arm tackles, and he also has great balance. But people think about Best. They think about his speed. They know he ran track in high school. Outstanding. They think, oh, you know, soft. Not at all. He's a tough guy. He'll run through arm tackles. You don't want to label him as just a track guy. Won the 100 meters, state champ here in California. But he's a football player. And now on short yardage, got the first down and looks to break free. And he almost did. Marcus Robinson finally got to him, but another nine yards for best. Well, the defensive impact players from Miami have their hands full. Antonio Dixon up front, he's got to make sure he handles Alex Mack and restricts that rushing lane for job at best. John Spence, freshman rookie of the year in the ACC on defense. Outstanding speed at the linebacking spot. He'll be effective. And Glenn Cook, he's the leader of that defense at the middle linebacker spot in his sixth season at Miami. He missed the entire 07 season with a foot injury, and he's a dynamic young man. And now testing the right side, and it looked like the ball came loose, and Miami signals that they have it. Kane's ball. Shane Vereen loses the ball, and the Canes jump on it. And this is something that Miami hasn't done much of this season, taking the football away. Only 14 takeaways this season. Jojo Nicholas is the one who gets in there, rips that thing out. Clearly a fumble. You don't have uh, Shane Vereen on the ground. Nicholas gets in there and recovers it. The ball looked like it was ripped out by Romeo Davis, number 51. So Jojo Nicholas with the fumble recovery. He's a local product. Down in Miami, trying to follow him that great line of Miami safeties like Ed Reed, Kenny Phillips. And now Javaris James playing tailback for the Canes. And James gets the call and finds the sledding a little rough as Felder came into the backfield and took him down for a three yard loss along with defensive end Tyson Alulu. The Cal defense is very talented, Rod. Let's look at the impact players for the Bears. Uh, starts up front with Tyson Alu Alu, who's been a great player for them for years. He's their best defensive lineman, second team all Pac-10. And Zach Follett, he's the playmaker. He's the linebacker who rushes the quarterback, creates a lot of havoc in the backfield, likely to be an NFL guy. And Sid Quan Thompson has really blossomed as a corner, first team all Pac-10, and a great punt return. He has started 
all 38 games of his career for the Golden Bears and they go with the inside handoff to James and he's still pushing ahead and he's able to get to the 46 so he gains seven that time. Well that's that's huge. You know, they have to stay out of third and long with the young quarterback and, and most quarterback doesn't matter how experienced you are you're facing a good defense third and six third and seven third and eight plus that's tough and California loves to get into their nickel package five defensive backs they bring pressure they get after you. they have 33 sacks on the season I would like to dial one up right here the true freshman Ja'Cory Harris they're going to run it on third down and finding nowhere to go is James as big Derek Hill smothered him all 305 pounds of him. Yeah, trying to be conservative and stay out of a tough spot here. You see just complete domination up front. Look at the way they handle this up front. They do a nice job of defeating the point of attack. Derek Hill very great up front and inside number 76. Nice up front play. So the defense is showing off their stuff early on as Bosher back out to punt. Sid Kron Thompson calling for the fair catch. And he corrals it at about the 24. Speedy defense on both sides. Randy Shannon knows all about that. He was a star linebacker back in the day. Scoreless in San Fran. More to come. ESPN College Football, the Emerald Bowl, is brought to you by Emerald Nuts. Stay sharp at 3 p.m. with natural energy from Emerald Nuts. And by the Volkswagen Signed and Drive event. German engineering for practically just a signature. Beautiful scene here in San Francisco, the cable cars, the Emerald Bowl. Good Miami and Cal. Good to have you in my part of the country. Cal. That's right. Joe Tessitore alongside Rod Gilmore. Our Bay Area guy who's got a home game here, as do the Golden Bears. This stadium sold out and a sea of blue and gold throughout. Four possessions so far in the first four drives. We've only seen one first down. Now Longshore pressured on the inside. Looks to get out of it and just chucks it away up for grabs. And it falls incomplete. Well, that was dangerous for a moment. You saw Brandon Harris coming in there. And the pressure came from Antonio Dixon on the inside. Well, that's the kind of play that has gotten Longshore in trouble. And in trouble with the Cal fans. And he seems to have this tendency on occasion to take chances and toss the ball up that winds up in the wrong hand. And that was the problem with him losing his starting job to Kevin Riley, you know, this season. And you see Riley on the sidelines there who, who won the job to start the season and gave it back for this ball game. Longshore now and they're setting up the screen of Tucker and he is blasted right away. Boy this Miami defense is bringing it tonight. Sean Spence just came in there and ripped that apart. When we talk about the speed of the Miami defense. It showed up right there. And Sean Spence wasted no time. He just comes flying up right away. Shows up look, right there. Flying right in from the inside to the outside. The linebacking spot. He comes in there and makes a play. He's got great speed. Sean Spence, the freshman All-American. Defensive coordinator Bill Young, who's been everywhere and coached everyone. He said he's better than any freshman I have ever been associated with. He is so impressed with Spence. He has that unique ability to slip blocks. He uses his athleticism to make plays. We have Reset the game clock. Eight minutes, 26 seconds. Thank you. Nick Define, head of our officiating crew today, as the clock continued to run after that incompletion there. So the youthful speed of the Miami defense coming up early here. Now a third and ten for Longshore. Flanked by Job at Best. Longshore. He's got Tucker this time. And here it is a foot race. Touchdown, Cal. 76 yards, Longshore to Tucker. Oh, 
Well, Nate Longshore put the ball on the money. He got it behind the short guy and in front of the deep guy in the in the zone they were playing. Two safeties deep, corners up. He got it right in between them, right on time. And then Tucker outran the secondary. And Coach Randy Shannon was quick to get over to the referee. And the officials are talking things over. Well, I think Randy Shannon is thinking he didn't get into the end zone, that he might have stepped out. And he wants a good hard look at that. You know, look at the knee. Watch yeah. the knee here. Miami coach is challenging ruling on the field, but the runner was down. Brandon Harris was chasing down Varan Tucker and got to him just before the goal line. The question is, was the knee down before Tucker was able to extend himself and cross the goal line? Remember, you need to have conclusive evidence when you review this. So they will be looking at two things. They'll look first to see, did he step out of bounds before going into the end zone? And then secondly, where was his knee down when the ball crossed the plane? Now you can make from that angle, it's hard to tell, but it's possible that he was only at about the yard, the two-yard line of the yard and a half. Well, his right knee looks to take a divot yeah. before he extends to the end zone. Sure, but remember, this, this angle we're looking at is from the end zone, so it doesn't give us that depth perception, really, of where that ball is right now when he stretches the ball out. So you need conclusive evidence to overturn the call. Jim Keogh is our replay official from the Big Ten. Talking things over with referee Nick Define. Yeah, now from, from our angle looking at it right here, you see the knee go down, and from this perspective, it looks like the ball has not crossed the plane. Now, what might be the better look would be from the sideline to see if the ball crosses the plane. So Varan Tucker yeah. waiting for the verdict to come in. See if his knee was down there. Yeah, well, you, you can see from this angle, the knee is down on the two yard line. Where is the ball? Where is the ball when that knee is down? Tucker, a very athletic player from Torrance, California, who's transferred from El Camino, Juco player, had one of the best catches we've seen all year against USC. Oh, that one handed grab? Oh. But now he's looking to see if he can have one of his most memorable plays of the year for him stand up here in the Emerald Bowl. You know what I mean by that angle from the end yes, zone I do. looking? It's, it's the depth. Yep. If it was the sideline view, obviously you can tell exactly where the ball is at that moment. Now, to my eye, it looks like he's short of the goal line, yeah. regardless of the fact that you don't have the perfect side angle you want. Hey, I guess he'd have to have some pretty long arms to stretch yeah. that about two yards, huh? No. <laughs> he goes 6-1, but... He plays much bigger, though. He's got to play a lot bigger. There's a heck of a play as Longshore was able to connect to a streaking Tucker. First moment of the game that we've seen any offense come up big. First Cal completion of the game. And we'll see if it holds up as a 76 yard touchdown or they mark it short. I think they're going to mark him short. I mean, that's not the best Rolling in. Down at the two yard line, the California ball. First down and goal on the two yard line. So a 76 yard touchdown becomes a 73 yard reception. But Cal will be knocking on the door with a first and goal. Yeah, and there was no question his knee was down. The only question was from that angle could you make the determination that the ball did not cross the plane there? And the replay officials obviously did. Well, they took their time and seemed like from the replay we saw they got it right. So the ball is spotted just over the threshold of the two yard line. Give Randy Shannon a good, uh, good credit for challenging that call. Here's Best. And Best is taken down short of the goal line. Coach Randy Shannon looking for his defense to step up here. Oh, California 
obviously likes running inside behind Alex Mack, Gerardi Award winner, great center. A lot of their running plays are based on him. So second and goal, best remains as the lone back. Gets the pitch and easily into the end zone. So Javid Best cleans it up after the review of the big play to Tucker. And Best scores from a yard out. Yeah, not a lot to this, but a nice block on the edge by their fullback, Tyson Alu Alu, right there. He does a nice job of getting the block there. Will Tao full. I'm sorry about that. Not Tyson Alu Alu. But 23, Taufoa is out there. Great block on the edge. Makes it easy for job at best. And Giorgio Tavecchio with the extra point. The freshman from Milano, Italy, tax it on. Five play drive, 76 yards. Tucker took care of 73 of them. And Best finishes it off. And Cal goes up a touchdown early on. Welcome back to the Emerald Bowl here in San Fran. Joe Tessitore alongside Rod Gilmore. Cal Bears go up 7 zip thanks to Nate Longshore connecting with Rand Tucker for 73 yards and setting up job at best from a yard out. Cal fans flooding to AT&T Park. And there's Giorgio Tavecchio who went from Italy to Connecticut to Virginia to California and three days before the season started to the roster of the Cal Bears. <laughs> Just walked on there. This is a short kick that Miami fair catches. So both teams special teams wise staying away from the speedy return man. Here's the sports center right now with Reese Davis. RD what's up. All right, Joe, check in for his college basketball. Eric Devendorf has been reinstated by Syracuse. The second leading scorer of the guard had been suspended following a virtual, verbal altercation with a female student. And Patrick White ended his career with his fourth bowl win as a starter as West Virginia beat North Carolina in the Meineke Car Care Bowl. Sports Center after the game. Stay current with ESPN News. What an entertaining one that was with West Virginia and NC playing a great game. Corey Harris trying to get free and unable to do so. Zach Follett with the sack. Hey, what do you say pregame? It's my last game. I don't care about my body. I'm laying it out there. Well, Zach Follett is just an impressive guy. Speed rusher on the outside, and you have to account for him. He's a pretty good open field tackler, better in the backfield than in down the field, but he was just all alone. You got to have somebody on him. That's nine and a half sacks for Follett this season. 14 yard loss as Follett came in and got to the true freshman, Ja'Cory Harris. And now Cooper trying to find some running room right up the middle. And Cooper was taken down by Sean Katoos. Tess, let's go back to that big play that led to the touchdown. Watch the matchup there. It looks like Miami is trying to rotate up and have their corner rotate over there. They're trying to bring the safety over. Brandon Harris, number one, is the corner who does a little bit of a trying to chuck the guy there. Tucker, Tucker gets in between the corner and the safety. And he gets in between Harris there. And it's off to the races until he is chased down by Harris on the two-yard line. That was a 73 yarder that set up the Cal score. Now a third and 18 for Harris. Harris pressured again. Just trying to do it on his own, un unable to find much room as Sid Quan Thompson, one of the fastest players on the field, tracked him down. Yeah, again, you know, we, we belabor the point, but California, third down defense, they're very, very good. And you see the zone that they drop into, and they still get pressure. That time you had Rulon Davis coming in, pressuring Harris out of the pocket. That defense, third down, very, very good, only giving up first downs 30% of the time. Usher. Gets it away. Pressure did come. 
It bounces at midfield and takes a pal bounce and finally is hauled in at the 42 yard line. So just a 19 yard punt from the guy who was named the team MVP this year. Well Rod I know each week you like to dive into the film and come up with your research. What did you find out about Cal. Well, this week I was able to do it in my own basement here and <laughs> for offense California they have to get something in the passing game mid range long shore has to be effective. He's been effective with one pass defensively they have to get to Harris. They got to get hits on him might not sack him but they have to knock him around. And so far they've done that. Javid best now and best with a seam. Gets past the man. Javid best touchdown Golden Bears 42 yards. Watch how he runs as he is looking to get back here. He wants to run opposite of where Alex Mack starts that block. He cuts it back. He does this time and time again. And if you think anybody is going to catch Job at best when he gets to the open, forget about it. Zavecchio's so kick is up and good. Job at best. Two touchdowns to start the night. He just turns it on and he is gone. 14 zip, Cal on top. Job at best, the sophomore for the Cal Bears, who had 311 yards. In the last regular season game, fourth best rushing game in Pac-10 history is off to a dynamic start here tonight. Two touchdowns for the Cal Bears early on. Yeah, you see the long runs that he makes. 16 rushes of 20 yards or more this season. 10 for touchdowns. 58 yards rushing tonight already on six carries. So Tavecchio back out for the picking chores and once again they pop it up and try to stay away from the speed of Brandon Harris as Daryl Sharpton collects it for Miami and as for Rod's research for the Canes yeah, well you know offensively it's not that hard they've got to throw the ball you know they can't wait until they get inside the 20 because they won't score on Cal's red zone defense defensively it's all about job at best keep him from making the big plays they haven't done that so far tonight you said you have to make sure he doesn't go for the 20 plus gains he just went for 42 and you saw what happens when he gets through that first wave of defenders and tries to match up speed for speed he wins so now Harris and James back out on the field Harris looking for Johnson and that is out of bounds incomplete it was caught by Sean Katus but Harris just lofting it out there for his former high school teammate Aldarius Johnson well you see James talking to the freshman the true freshman quarterback trying to settle him down he can't try and force things this is only his second start his first start was the season opener and now he finds himself down 14 points against a California offense that looks like it's really starting to find itself behind job at best and he knows they've got to get back in the game they got to get a score he might press a little here yeah this isn't Charleston Southern he's up against this is a big spot against a speedy and athletic defense and Javaris James gets a taste of that right there Cameron Jordan taking him down. He's the son of the six time NFL Pro Bowler the tight end Steve Jordan. Yeah look what they do up front though. They do a nice job. You defeat right now you defeat the guys up front. You defeat that center. You force double teams and you don't get that done yet. You get a nice job by Kane inside. So just what the true freshman didn't need if you want to settle in a third and 11. Here comes the blitz off the edge. And he looked to Johnson once again but Mike Muhammad was coming in off the edge. 
for a free shot on Ja'Cory Harris. He just had to get rid of it. You think defensive coordinator Bob Gregory is dialed in on this thing? He wants hits on Harris. Harris has not been able to get comfortable, set his feet. They haven't completed anything downfield. He brings pressure from the left side and then pressure from the right side. Well, Muhammad's a good example of just how talented these Cal linebackers are. They say he's the best overall linebacker. He doesn't start. Saquon Thompson having to come up to make that fair catch. He was a good 10 yards off the ball when he ran up for it. Well, Capital One Bowl Week continues Monday on ESPN. We've got two games. First at 3 Eastern, North Carolina State and the Rutgers Scarlet Knights in the PapaJohns.com Bowl. Two teams that are playing well here at the end of the season. Then at 8 Eastern, the Valero Alamo Bowl, quarterback Chase Daniel. And the Missouri Tigers going to go up against Northwestern. Capital One Bowl Week continues Monday on ESPN. Missouri NC North State. State. Well, that's going to be a great <laughs> offensive game. But NC State and Rutgers, you can make the argument, ACC and Big East, two of the teams playing the best at the end of the year. Here goes best again. Cutting back against the grain after going to the outside. And another first down for Pal as Best tacks on 15 more yards. You're in a dilemma when you deal with Javid Best. He has so much speed, he can get to the outside that you have to overrun plays. You see right there, that's happening with Glenn Cook get outside. But when you overrun plays, he is so good at cutting back, he can find a lot of yards inside. Eight yards a carry. For Javid Best on the season's number one in the nation tonight, he's over 10 yards a carry. Flea flicker now, back to Longshore. He's pressured and just throws it away. So that Miami front four stayed with it and got after Longshore. They may not need the flea flicker right now. You can just keep giving it to Javid Best. Just take a look at what he's done recently. Against the Washington Huskies, he was just outrageous. More than 300 yards rushing. Big play after big play. And check out this move here. That's this play. And you just don't catch this man in the open field. He's got breakaway speed, great balance. He's one of the few guys that's had a day like that. 311 yards, the top FBS rushing performance. Well, you see what Sean White did, but when you look at that list, best the only on that list to do it against a BCS automatic qualifying school in conference play. And this time he gets the ball and gets it down for a one yard gain. Stephen Wesley was able to take him down there. You know, for me, the impressive thing about Best is, is the way he's come back this season following the hip injury he had last year. And a lot of folks thought he might not be able to even play this season. But he, he managed to come back, didn't have surgery on it, was able to rehabilitate himself, and only missed a game and a half this season with all the other things that happened to him. No, he's dealt with elbow, foot, ankle problems, missed last year's bowl win against Air Force with that hip injury, and they really did contemplate off-season surgery. Now Shane Vereen comes in at running back, flanking Longshore on third and nine. Longshore up and over the intended target. He was trying to get it to Varan Tucker. Yeah, well, Marcus Van Dyke had the coverage and a high throw. Same old story for California in their mid-range passing game this season. And Jeff Tedford, it's so frustrating for him. You're talking about a guy who's had Aaron Rodgers, Achilles Smith, Joey Harrington. And look at this. You got a guy open in your face and the ball's hot. And whether he's used Riley or Longshore, the problem has been the same. Brian Anger So Brian Anger. It's a punt for the Golden Bears. High kick. And it goes into the end zone for a touchback. Now Miami looking for something here. Well, let's check in with Quint Kessnick. Quint. Joe, the sense I get here down on the field side is that was a big stop by that Miami defense as Cal drove into their territory. Momentum really on Cal's side. Big home contingent here to support them. Meanwhile, Miami with their youth, their inexperience in bowl games on their heels. I think it was a key stop. You know, they weathered the storm. This game could have gotten out of hand quickly. Well, many feel it's a good point, Quint, that the issue will not be with the Miami defense, but what can Ja'Cory Harris, the true freshman, offer up on this side of the ball? 
and Greg Cooper fighting ahead for two yards. Well, Tess, you and Quinn are right. I mean, you can't get momentum back unless your offense does something. And right now, California is really bringing everything on first down. And Bob Gregory is dialing up pressure and run blitzes to make sure that he puts them in a second and long and third and long situation. He loves to get into the nickel package. I mean, when California gets their five defensive backs, they bring pressure, they play zone behind it, and for a freshman, that's really, really tough. Gregory, the defensive coordinator, the second best scoring defense in the Pac-10, of course, behind USC, which may be one of the best defenses in the history of college football. Now Harris, and he does complete it this time. It was tight end Chris Zellner, and Zellner goes for six yards. Zellner getting the start tonight because Dietrich Epps, the starting tight end, is out with an injury. Well, Zellner can can run that little route over the middle and catch the ball. But what they lose with Epps is a guy that can get down the field. You know, Epps is a big tight end who can really get down the field. And you just see him, just goes, he pops right in here, lots of room in the middle. Just sit down and wait for the quarterback to find you. So a third and two for Harris. Greg Cooper is the lone back. Play action, Harris. And fought for, and then bounced up into the arms of Javaris James for a first down. As he tried to get it, I believe, to Tyrone Bird, who is an offensive lineman who moved over to jersey number 84 tonight because of the injury to Epps and a suspension to a third string tight end. So they throw it to the lineman. But he almost gives it right over to Cal. That ball bounced off of him or bounced off the ground. Now it goes for a completion and a first down as James did a good job of staying with the play and eyeballing that ball and hauling it in off the deflection, the bobble ball intended for Bird. Harris now winds up and goes deep. And hauled in by Hankerson. Leonard Hankerson, a big spark for the Canes, 40-yard gain. And what a nice throw by the youngster Harris. Plenty of time, had time to set his feet and wait for his man to run this slow developing route. He's in the slot, Hankerson is, and just runs a deep post. Has to wait a long time for that. Good protection. And it's one of the things we talked about. Miami needs to throw the deep ball. Now Quinn just talked about the momentum that the Canes defense just gave him. But the offense needed to respond. Harris just did. That's the end of the quarter. So it was a first quarter with the spotlight on Javid Best. The one-yard touchdown run, the 42-yard touchdown run. But here in the final moments of the first stanza, a little life out of Harris and the Canes. 14-zip, Cal on top. Canes marching towards the goal when we return to San Fran. Glad you're with us here. The 2008 Emerald Bowl, part of ESPN's presentation of Capital One Bowl Week. Joe Tessitore alongside Rod Gilmore and Quint Kesnick. Cal Bears out to a good start in front of their home fans here who have sold out AT&T Park, the beautiful ballpark by the bay. But, Rod, maybe a little confidence boost for the true freshman, Ja'Cory Harris, for the Canes. That one throw to Hankerson can give him back the confidence that might have been knocked around in the first quarter. To throw again. Looking for Johnson, and it goes incomplete. Well, Darius Johnson, who a year ago was the high school teammate of Ja'Cory Harris. Well, he likes the fade route with him down here, and he's going against a good matchup with Sid Quantanto. Watch how he plays this. He had great position, and he plays the ball. So many times you see a cornerback be in great position, but he doesn't play the ball. Sidquan Thompson always plays the ball. Thompson goes 5'9", Johnson goes 6'2", but Thompson is as fast and smart of a cornerback as you'll see. Cooper on second down, a flag is down as Cooper tries to stretch it to the outside and is immediately taken down by both Thompson and Follett. And that's against Miami.
Greg Cooper had a very solid and productive year for the Canes and they could really use him to take some of the pressure off the true freshman Harris. Illegal shift. Two players moving on the offense. That penalty is declined. Third down. And, you know, tough, tough deal here now. You've got a third and long situation. California will bring pressure. They're in their nickel package. And if you're Miami, you must be thinking screen or draw play. You know, something that will at least keep you in range of trying to get three out of it or the possibility of going for it on fourth down. But you don't want a negative play here. And California will be pushing for a negative play. Two receivers to the top for Harris. Flanked by Cooper in the backfield. A little bit of pressure. They pick it up. Harris trying to get free. Trying to get to that line. He's got the first down. So he does it on his own. Nine yard gain. Darian Hagan, the cornerback, made the tackle. But the speedy Ja'Cory Harris keeps things alive for Miami. Well, he does a nice job here, Harris does. He sees this coverage. Look, he sees the two safeties deep. He reads the zone, and he knows that he's got something deep he can look at. He takes his time. When things break down, he doesn't panic. He looks for a better view, and then he finds the first down marker and heads right for it. He saw the coverage, saw there was nothing there, and made something happen. Play action now. Harris. Looking for James. Incomplete. I think James got away with a little push off as he got towards the end zone. But Harris is clearly starting to feel pretty good about himself. Yeah, as Eddie Young was trying to cover James down there in the end zone. He saw the separation there at the end. James kind of pushed off got away with it but couldn't come up with the ball at the end. Oh, and he's going to that corner of the end zone. We're here in this baseball park. That wall comes up on you. And how about that ground out there? It's a little, a little hard. Too. No warning track. So second and ten now. And here's Cooper with a good block out in front. And Cooper able to charge ahead inside the ten yard line. And that Cal defense, the well experienced of being in this spot, coming up big. Yeah, they, they're great in the red zone. When you look at the number of touchdowns they've given up, and basically 46% of the time, people score. 54% of the time, they stop them from getting touchdowns. That is phenomenal. Tenth play of the drive for the Canes. Looking for Bird. Up and in. Touchdown. Ja'Cory Harris to LaRon Bird. Freshman to freshman. You know, the amazing thing about it was Cal played it correctly. They came off and had great coverage by Darren Hagan. He just couldn't play the ball in the air. He could not get up. Bird could. And we saw just a few plays ago on the other side, Thompson was able to make the play on the ball. And the right coverage, they just didn't make the play at the end. A phenomenal play by Bird to outleap Darren Hagan. Bosher. Through and true. So growing up on that drive, the young Canes offense. Ja'Cory Harris, he hooked up for a 41-yard reception. And then found the big bird, LaRon Bird, all six foot four of them pulling it in. 14 7 game. This could be the moment. Uh, remember back in the day, number 47 for the U, Michael Irvin. You know, new 47 is LaRon Bird, and he's got big upside. 6'4, 211 pounds, and he just hauled in the touchdown, the cut. This lead in half. I tell you what, you wear that number, you better yeah, perform. You better be good. You will hear from Michael Irvin. <laughs> yeah. He's gonna have he's gonna have 47 on speed dial. Oh yeah, yeah. You, you better play when you wear that number because he certainly played at Miami and with the Dallas Cowboys. Well, Bird caught the game tying touchdown in the final minutes of regulation and a come from behind overtime victory at Virginia and now does wonders for the confidence of this Miami team here in the Emerald Bowl. Job at best. Best only out to the 21. 
And now, Rod, for tonight's Aflac trivia question. You're a Bay Area guy, so you have a little bit of advantage on that. Javid Best currently leads Cal in both rushing yards and receptions this season, but who was the last player to lead Cal in both of those categories? I'm all over. They've had some talented players yeah. for years. Yeah, 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 yeah. Real talented You know, and if you think years. about recent players, you know, I, I'll toss out a few names. How about, you know, Marshawn Lynch? Oh, sure. How you about J.J. Arrington? Yep. J.J. Arrington was a great one recently with the Bears. Yeah, they, they have some uh, they have some players. They've had some running backs over the years. And right now, it is Javid Best who is the star of this program. And Nate Longshore is going to call a timeout and talk things over as he came out for first down to start this drive. The always animated Jeff Tedford giving his instructions. His team up 14-7 here in the seventh play of the Emerald Bowl. ESPN College Football, the Emerald Bowl, is brought to you by Mercedes-Benz, located on the web at NBUSA.com, by Aflac, ask about it at work, and by Capital One Card Lab at CapitalOne.com, what's in your wallet? There's the ice skating at Union Square in San Fran, where Cal and Miami on display. Well, that's a beautiful holiday scene in downtown San Francisco. This is a great bowl to come to this time of the year with the festivities in Union Square and the whole town lit up. The only problem is, is when your wives are shopping in <laughs> Union Square, Rod. Oh, yeah. That's, oh, yeah. that's really the only problem. I, I, yeah, we, we help the local economy, huh? <laughs> they talk about the economic boost that a bowl brings to a town. Trust me, we know. <laughs> so after that timeout, Cal back to it, and coming on the end around is Jeremy Ross, and he is taken down immediately by Spencer Atkins. Yeah, pretty good speed. You talk about Miami's defense and you know them getting on track. Just watch how you get this flow right here. You're looking at him. He sees it. He's going to just run past blockers and get in and make the play. That's Spencer Atkins, and you know the Miami defense is tackling much better now. I mean, they missed tackles early, and we've seen that throughout the bowl season in the first quarter. A lot of teams struggle with tackling. Javid Best comes back into the game here on second and ten. Longshore, that is complete to Ross. He's going to be short of a first down. Six oh, yards yes. gain there. And part of the issue with tackling is with the long layoff, you know, coaches are reluctant to, to tackle live, you, the risk of injury. And so you're rusty when you come play the bowl game. That's, that's a good point. And Randy Shannon talked about the practice that they were able to get in. On the other side, Cal and defensively and Coach Tedford, defensive coordinator Bob Gregory, made a point to say, hey, we went live. We went full a few times. And I think they had that in mind, Rod. Yeah, I, I think so. And the other thing about that is you want the bowl to be fun for guys. Guys don't like going live during bowl practices. They, they want to visit and hang out. Longshore pressure right up the middle. Gets rid of it, looking for best. And he was unable to get back to it as the pressure came from Glenn Cook. And Cook comes right up the middle. Longshore does a nice job of avoiding a sack, but this is just pressure right up the middle. Nothing fancy about it. Nobody picks him up. They outnumber them right up the middle. Cook is in there to make the play. It was all Longshore could do to get rid of the ball. And Miami seems to be settling in defensively. You now the Miami defense stepping up well. Past two times, they were out on the field. Anger now. And here's Travis Benjamin. Benjamin able to cut it up to the 47-yard line. 34-yard punt. And Benjamin on the return. So the defense looking to set up the offense again. What will Ja'Cory Harris do when he gets that opportunity? Stay with us. Who will claim the hardware here in a much anticipated showdown, ACC and Pac-10, Cal and Miami. Javid Best with two touchdowns early on for the Golden Bears, but the Canes coming back as the young Ja'Cory Harris starting to find himself here. The quarterback getting a start, only his second start of his career. 
Javaris James now trying to get off the edge there out to midfield. Ja'Cory Harris comes from Northwestern High down in Miami. As do a lot of the Canes, Rod. Talented young team. And Northwestern High, the national champs a year ago. Well, he was the starting quarterback, two-time champ at Northwestern. So Coach Randy Shannon with a very good relationship with that program and all those guys saying, hey, let's just continue on for another four years and stay together. And ten of them have. And here's James again, and he goes nowhere as he was met right away on the inside by Mika Kane. Well, Ja'Cory Harris and Aldarius Johnson, they both attended Northwestern High in Miami, and they hooked up a lot. Won a pair of Florida Class 6A state championships, and now true freshmen with the Canes here. It'll be very interesting to see as these two develop through the years. Yeah, but right now, I'll tell you this, he, he's been good on third down tonight, much better than I expected. And he's got Johnson, his old high school teammate, split to the top. Has time, gets it to Zellner, and Zellner has a first down. So you see the maturity, the poise, the calmness now of Harris. Well, it goes back to that one pass that he completed to Hankerson in the first quarter, the big play. Since then, he's been much more confident and settled in the pocket. He's feeling the pressure. He's feeling when to throw the ball, when to take off and run. And on third down now, he's been much better than he was in the first half of the first quarter. It was interesting to hear with some of the seniors in Miami. One of them yesterday said to me, you know, the only thing that concerns me is how calm he is. Yeah. He is so unaffected here. <laughs> but it's a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> so now first down for the Canes. Harris to the air again and gets it to his big fullback, Patrick Hill. Hill goes 5'9", 262, just his third reception of the year. Well, you talk about Harris and the composure we've seen ever since he made this throw. He got Hankerson on a big play, and since then, he's been calm in the pocket, finding his man Bird out there, running out of the pocket when he needed to. He seems like a much more confident, calm, and different quarterback than the guy who started the game. He said, I just want to make sure everyone around me is happy. Now they're happy to keep playing like this, Ja'Cory. Second and six now. Play action again. Sprinting to the right and tries to get it up to Bird, who's a very big target, but not that big, Rob. How about the story? You know, when we were talking to Ja'Cory Harris the other day, and he and his teammates were taking a boat over to Alcatraz. Yeah, you know, he's calm and cool and talking to us. And his first trip to San yeah. Fran, mind you. And he goes, oh, oh, man, what's wrong? He goes, well, you know, some birds just got me. <laughs> he went, yeah, he said, I'm out here in the middle of the water, and the birds just got me, a bunch of them. <laughs> Good tidings and droppings from the sky onto Ja'Cory Harris. But he said, hey, Ja'Cory, it's good luck. <laughs> That's what they say, it's good luck. Third and six. He could use some here. Has time. Now pressured off to the side and throws it away as big Ruan Davis came in on him. Had a moment there. We could have got rid of it. But not enough to hold off Davis. On the edge. Well, you know you're going to get third down pressure from California. Davis is, just, is to the right side and forces Harris out. Now, Harris does a nice job of getting rid of the football. It saved the opportunity to pin California down deep. You know, if he takes a sack there, they've got big problems. Also saw good coverage that time by Mike Muhammad on Zellner, the tight end. Bosher's kick now. And it just goes over the goal line. For a touchback. So Miami with a bit of momentum, but the Cal defense stepped up when they needed to. 14 7 game here. 8 11 to go before the half in the Emerald Bowl. A sellout here at ATT Park because the local team is in the game. Cal with a 14 7 lead here in the Emerald Bowl and Capital One Bowl Week continues Tuesday on ESPN two games 
Maryland and Nevada in the Roadies Humanitarian Bowl up on the Blue Turf in Boise. Then at 8 Eastern, the Pacific Life Holiday Bowl. You know they're going to be lighting up that scoreboard rod. Oklahoma State and Oregon hook it up down there in San Diego as Capital One Bowl Week continues Tuesday on ESPN. It's like a rule. If you play in the Holiday Bowl, you better come to score points. Well, those two teams can yeah, score a lot. They <laughs> Cal. Going right back to basics with job at best, but not finding any running room. Well, earlier tonight, we asked you the Aflac trivia question. And if you're a Cal fan, maybe you know this one. Job at best currently leads the team in rushing and receptions, but who was the last player to lead the Golden Bears in both of those categories? Rod Gilmore. Survey says. I Survey think I know. says. I know. He was an all-time Chuck player. Muncie. Yep. Now, you think Chuck Muncie. Yep. You think Eric Coriel, those teams with Fouts in the 80s in the NFL, but his days back in Cal, he was something special. Yeah, he was a 235-pound running back before you had 235-pound <laughs> running backs. And now they got the speed burner. Javid Best, and here he goes with blockers out in front. Javid Best out to midfield, but when he turns it on, boy, oh boy, is he a challenge to take down. Anthony Reddick finally got to him, but 32 yards out of best. California has had a number of great running backs. This guy is the fastest one they've ever had. Look how quickly he gets to the edge now. He is at the edge. They are outnumbered there, and that speed and how quickly he gets there creates a problem. You cannot duplicate that in practice, no matter how often and how many people you get out there. This guy is truly special. Shane Vereen comes in now to spell best for a moment. Empty backfield now as Vereen is in motion and they set it up to him. He's going to pass the ball. He's looking for it, but then swallowed up as they had coverage downfield. He was looking to get it to Cameron Mora, but to Marcus Van Dyke with a fine defensive play, and instead it goes for a loss of five. Well, trick plays aren't getting it done, but this guy is. Job is best is having another huge night. Whether he's taking the ball inside, cutting back, or getting to the outside, he has been a one-man wrecking crew for the Cal offense. Rod, why are they not just sticking with basics? They've done the flea flicker. They just tried that trick play. When they just give the ball to number four, good things happen. Well, you know, they got to mix it up, but their passing game is anemic. Longshore is two of nine. They're trying to find another way to move the ball. This time, he sets up the little screen. Coming back for it was Vereen. But that Miami defense and Sean Spence all over it. Spence, the first team freshman All-American. And what did Bill Young tell us about the Cal offense? He said, hey, no disrespect intended, but it's all about best. He doesn't care about the quarterbacks, doesn't care about the receivers. It's all about stopping job at best. And Sean Spence got that message. And I'll, he understands that. I'll tell you something else the defensive coordinator of Miami said. He said, watching tape, Riley performs better than Longshore. Yeah, but Nate Longshore gets the start tonight from the way he practiced in these weeks leading up third and 17 now. Green, he's trying to get loose, but he's well short of a first down. Spencer Atkins with the tackle. And you mentioned Riley. We don't expect to see him tonight. Hey, Jeff Tedford said that once he named a starting quarterback for this game, he did not want the quarterback looking over his shoulder. And if he named Longshore, he expected Longshore to play the entire game. Riley doesn't look like a guy who expects to come in the ballgame. Riley has started plenty this year. Nine starts, 14 touchdowns. And many were surprised to hear that Longshore was getting the nod tonight. Brian Anger to punt. Travis Benjamin calls for the fair catch, and he secures it at the 15. Well, every player can smell the roses, and every team wants its place in history. Every eye's on Pasadena, the granddaddy of them all. Penn State, USC. I mean, what a headline-making Rose Bowl this is. The 9 Rose Bowl game presented by City. And coverage begins New Year's Day at 4.30 Eastern on ABC. I'm looking forward to this one. Two yeah. tradition-rich programs meeting up. Well, that HD offense of Penn State, known for putting up some points, and that USC defense, known for not giving up any points. Cooper now on first down. And not much run on the inside there. 
DJ Holt with the tackle. Let's check in with Quinn. Joe, this is an instance of Miami possession that's a tough substitution possession, according to their offensive coordinator, Patrick Nix. The players have to jog about 60 yards to the huddle, get organized in the huddle, and get to the line of scrimmage all within the 40-second play clock. And this was a scenario that, that the coach really had some fear in. Yeah, it's because of this unique configuration here of playing in the home of the San Francisco Giants where both teams are on the same sideline and there's just a 10 yard buffer there from 45 to 45. So now with Miami as far away from their team as can be. Harris to the air. And that it goes for a first down as he was able to get it to Zellner who's playing a big role tonight with the absence of Diedrich Epps. Yeah absolutely. You, you know you talk about the configuration and the impact on the offense as we take a look at this play you get a rollout and just find your tight end but this configuration yes there's a negative for the team but then you balance that against the positives of hey playing in this ballpark and being in San Francisco you know how does it balance out and right now the Miami folks tell you hey you know being on the same sideline isn't so bad compared to what they've benefited from being in San Francisco. Well, and the fans love it. There's a certain excitement playing here at this park. Cooper now. It's a block out in front. And Cooper takes it for six yards. Charming place. One of the best ballparks in Major League Baseball, AT&T Park. And to come here for a major college football game with two programs like this, there is a buzz in the city. This is a sellout ticket. The city of San Francisco and this ballpark are just as much a factor of the success of this bowl game as the two teams on the field. Well, it's a yeah, dynamic combination. Absolutely, and don't forget about the Giants and their involvement with that and providing the facility for this. And, and, and the Giants just signing local boy Randy Johnson, you know, creating some, uh, some buzz around here for the San Francisco Giants fans. $8 million one-year contract in the recession-proof Major League Baseball. Well, he's a 45-year-old Randy Johnson who's going to try to get his 300th win of his career here in this ballpark. And that's a loss of one as Cooper carried the ball. Did anyone tell the Yankees that the economy's in the tank? <laughs> Unaffected, apparently, in the Bronx. There's home plate. Home plate of one of the bullpens. Here in the near sideline of AT&T Park. And right now, the pitcher, the ace for Miami, is the true freshman, the six foot four string bean, Ja'Cory Harris, who has played with confidence here in this second quarter. Third and five. Harris with time over the middle, and it is intercepted. Mike Muhammad with a dive interception of the freshman Ja'Cory Harris and that is the danger zone for a young quarterback over the middle can they see the linebackers can they see coverage he does not see this man here he doesn't see that man here he doesn't see the zone pressure drop off there three guys does he see them all apparently not Muhammad comes right back around and picks off that pass Muhammad Extending himself, the sophomore in this veteran group of linebackers who actually ends up playing the most even though he doesn't start because he backs up every single possession and is out in the field a heck of a lot. Now giving Cal a golden opportunity. Longshore to the outside and that was batted away by Sean Spence. Let's check in with Reese Davis for a look at what's coming up on the college football halftime report. RD. All right, Joe Tess, Patrick White wraps up his career in grand style. We also had a blowout in the Champ Sports Bowl that perhaps could bode well for Florida State next season. And we'll have a look ahead to the Rose Bowl, the Penn State USC showdown coming on New Year's Day. See you in just a little bit. Looking forward to that race. Be interesting to see Florida State next year as well as this Miami crew with all the youth between those two programs in the ACC. Can you imagine Javik Best running behind Mark May? <laughs> Longshore. He's going to the safety valve that time as Nyan Boateng hauls it in for a three-yard gain. Uh, plenty of time, minute and a half, two timeouts. No need to panic. California was trying to get up to the line of scrimmage. At least Longshore wanted to go to the line of scrimmage, but... Well, Tedford had other ideas and called a timeout. 
So Jeff Tedford wants to talk things over as they face a third down. 90 seconds to go. Up a touchdown. Joe Tessitore alongside Rod Gilmore. Quit Kesnick down on field level. Interception moments ago by Mike Muhammad, the fine linebacker for Cal. Now has the Golden Bears looking to get something accomplished here before the half. Yeah, they really haven't used best in the passing game yet. They have to get him involved in the passing game, if not now, in the second half. Longshore on third down. That ball was well off the mark. Botang was out there, but Longshore couldn't connect. Uh, and Cal fans are starting to boo. And well, that's nothing new. Yeah, yeah and they, they booed Longshore before, and it doesn't make any sense. You shouldn't be, you know, booing college players. And Longshore stands in there, balls off target. But Longshore and Riley have both struggled this season with accuracy. The intermediate passing game has not been good for Cal all season long. Well, they're staying out on the field on fourth and seven, but Coach Tedford said, you know, I don't think Longshore ever got the appreciation he deserved playing through all his injuries, timely interceptions, obviously, were his downfield. But he said the fans really rode him hard through his career. Well, the fans were disappointed last year after the great start when Cal was undefeated and ranked uh, second in the country and then fell apart, and they blamed Longshore for a lot of them. Now Longshore looking to get it complete to his tight end, but that's well short of a first down. That had no chance. Glenn Cook was all over Cameron Mora, but just... The selection of that receiver on fourth and seven. I mean, it was well short of a first down. What was the best case scenario there, Rob? Well, you see, Tedford did not want that. Hey, he's not happy. And, and that's been one of Longshore's problems, decision making. And sometimes he's pulled out the wrong decision and gotten kicked off. And there, you got to throw the ball down the field. Fourth down, they're going for it. They don't want you to be short of it. You know, the only guy you throw it short to in that situation is Javid Best. Because he might make a guy miss. But anybody other than that, you got to throw beyond the market. So Nate Longshore hearing the Boo Birds here at AT&T Park. And now Cooper out of the backfield. He's wrapped up immediately by Sid Quan Thompson. As good a defensive back as you'll see in the college game coming up. First team all pack tenor. And a fine player for the Golden Bears now. For three straight years. Uh, he will be a guy that will be mentioned for national awards next season as a senior if he's around. He will be pushed for All America and deservedly so. He's had a great year, was under the radar before that. Harris to Cooper again out of the backfield and trying to catch a seam. He's out to the 43 yard line, a pickup of eight, but. As the clock winds down, the one thing you get a sense of here is that Miami dodged a bullet there with that interception moments ago by Mike Muhammad. Well, I think that's right. I think Miami has more confidence because right now they believe offensively California can't throw the ball on them. And it's all about job at best. They, they'll feel pretty good about the second half. Harris, Zellner, as the clock continues to run here uh, you know not great clock management here you had timeouts if you're going to try and move the ball you know use the timeouts if you want to get to the locker room you know, get to the locker room so a timeout for randy shannon his first bowl game as a head coach second season here at miami and he had a deal with some issues beyond the field recently as quarterback Robert Marv was suspended for this Emerald Bowl. It was a violation of team rules, but I mean, it was pretty outspoken as to what happened and the circumstances that happened leading to the suspension. Right? And, you know, and Marv started 11 games for them this season. Didn't start the opener because he was suspended and ironically didn't start the final game of the season tonight because he was suspended for academic reasons. Well, there's a rule that Randy Shannon put forth that a player's going to be an eligible if he misses four more classes and what happened was according to Marv's father Eugene is that Robert Marv showed up 15 minutes late for a class but this is the way Randy Shannon wants to run his program as a strict disciplinarian Ker Kirby Hoke at the athletic director said to me recently he said I have never been associated with more of a disciplinarian 
than Randy Shannon, and we're proud to have him be that way. Well, I, I think Miami wants that and needs that after they had a string of, you know, bad incidents and what appeared to be they were undisciplined for, you know, a couple of years. And so Randy Three Shannon came in and said, we're going to clean all that seconds. up. He suspended five players for tonight's game. Marv, obviously the biggest name there. Chris Ivory, you see, is the long snapper. Now, he's the long snapper on punts. The snapper on the placement of kicks is still in the rotation. That's Jake Byrne, who's obviously who's, uh, actually one of the backup quarterbacks with the suspension now with Marvin moves up the depth chart. So here's Harris now on what should be the last play here of the half. Cooper is running out at the 49-yard line. Interesting first half as Cal came out in front behind the running of Javid Best. He had two touchdowns, but as things went on, Rod, you got the sense that Miami starting to gain confidence and momentum. No question. The momentum changed. It became really Miami's defense, and they started to find some confidence behind their quarterback, Harris. Quint Kessnick. Thanks, Joe. Uh, Coach Sedford, uh, Javid Best, uh, terrific performance from, from where you sit. How, how do you characterize what you've seen from him? Oh, he's doing a great job. The times he's had the ball in his hands has been great. You know, probably need to get it to him a little bit more. Will you stay with Nate Longshore, or will we see Kevin Riley? Oh no, Nate's, Nate Nate uh, will continue to play. He's not. He's doing just fine. We got to protect him a little bit better. He's had a lot of lot of uh, pass rush on him. We got to protect him better. Thanks, Coach. All right. Joe. Nate Longshore, six of 15, 92 yards. Job at best has been on, but Miami with a little momentum in the second quarter. 14-7 our score. Now let's join Reese Davis, Lou Holtz, Mark Main, Tommy Bowden in the studio for the Flomax Halftime Report. Gentlemen. This is ESPN's presentation of Capital One Bowl Week. Welcome back to the 2008 Emerald Bowl, part of ESPN's presentation of Capital One Bowl Week. Our score at the half, the Cal Golden Bears up a touchdown, 14-7. They jumped out 14-zip thanks to two touchdowns by Javid Best, but Miami with a comeback there in the second quarter. Joe Tessitore alongside Rod Gilmore. Rod, this had the look of a game that maybe could get away from Miami, yep. but the maturity of the true freshman. It's hard to balance there to say that statement, but Ja'Cory Harris, the poise, he looked very good in that he, second he quarter. He didn't look like a freshman at all. I mean, he looked like a veteran quarterback as he found his rhythm after he got Leonard Hankerson on a big pass play, came back a little later, later with Baron Bird for a touchdown pass, and the guy just matured as the game went on. No question about Javad, Javid Best being mature. That guy was all over the field, running for more than 100 yards against California, making guys miss time and time again and California discovered that he can be very very successful when they use him outside look at the chart you have on him to the left eight yard average to the right a 21 yard average not much going when they run him inside up the middle you can bet he's going to touch the ball a lot more in the second half job at best one of the most dynamic players in all of college football 10 carries for 106 yards and a couple of touchdowns but the play calling, they sort of did it to themselves. That's when Miami got the best of them. And once again, special teams, both teams staying away from the speedy return man as Daryl Sharpton had the fair catch. So here are the first half stats and the rushing yards for Cal. And obviously Miami, the time of possession, balancing that out. Well, the rushing yards for Miami is a problem. That puts more pressure on Harris to have a big game. And that may be too much. They're going to have to find a way to move the football either on the ground or with short passes to take a little bit of pressure off of Harris. So Ja'Cory Harris with an opportunity here in the second half to keep that momentum going. Greg Cooper is wrapped up right away by Tony Felder. And this 3-4 defense that Cal switched to this year really pays off with the athleticism of their backers. Quinn. Joe spoke to Randy Shannon at halftime. Very happy with their resiliency. On job at best, 
said two things. A, we got to tackle. When you got a shot at the guy, you got to wrap him up. Second, he said, we're going to commit eight or nine guys to the box if Cal's passing game doesn't become a threat. I asked him about Ja'Cory Harris. Most pleased with his ability to check down and, and throw some dump offs. And you'll notice Miami moving the pocket a little more in the second half. Harris now has time and able to get it to Zellner as he had a few times tonight with the absence of Diedrich Epps and a flag comes down. A, a late flag yeah, and Quint you know on that play we saw exactly what you were talking about as Harris looked downfield and then finally came back to his short receiver to drop the ball off. Following the play. Following the play. Dead ball. Personal foul. Late hit. 15 yard penalty. Be third down. So I didn't identify the player to Nick Define, who is uh, part of our officiating crew from the MAC tonight. Stoic Randy Shannon. What, what happens a lot is that guys come to clean up the pile and you saw Chris right Rutledge. there Chris Rutledge cleaning up a pile you know a defenseless player that's what the officials will protect against whether the guy is standing around a pile or has just kicked the ball on a punt he's defenseless and the officials will protect him. So it backs up Miami to a third and 16. Harris gets it to Cooper. Conservative call there as Cooper is only able to get to the 35. And Tyson Alulu cut him down. And here comes California with their 5 6 defensive back package. And out of this package, they've put pressure on Harris. Sid Quan Thompson back to return the Matt Bosher punt. Oh. Officials are uh, ruling this down. That's a nice uh, shortstop pickup by Bosher of that uh, that ground ball. Team MVP. Yeah. Yeah, some athleticism there. Matt Bosher does it all. Yeah, I, I don't know that I've ever seen a punter more aggressive and more physical than this guy. And nice hands there. But he'll get involved in tackles and blocks and, and all that kind of good stuff. Now the reason why there's a concern with the snaps on punts for Miami is actually because of one of those five suspensions by head coach Randy Shannon. And Jake Byrne was handling the long snaps there. It's a long short. Hands off to Best. And look at Sean Spence getting right after Javid Best, the freshman All-American, the ACC Defensive Rookie of the Year. And you heard what Coach Bill Young said, the defensive coordinator, said he has played better than any freshman I've ever been associated with in my coaching career. That's really good speed, undersized as a linebacker at six feet, 200 pounds. Could very well be a defensive back. Might be a little bit bigger next season as he Puts on some weight in the offseason. Bill Young is 62 years old and has been the defensive coordinator at Kansas, USC, Oklahoma, Ohio State. I mean, think about that statement. Oh, Best yeah. freshman oh, he's seen a lot I've of good ever ones. been associated with. Longshore from the gun looking for Tucker. And he threw it to the outside shoulder, and Tucker slipped as he tried to make a move back to that ball. But an incompletion and another reaction from the crowd who's been harsh on Longshore throughout his career. Well, and they're too quick to be harsh on Longshore for that. I mean, sometimes it's the fall of the receivers. At that time, Tucker slipped down, couldn't come out of his break. And Cal has struggled in, you know, pass protection with their offensive line. It's not all about Longshore. You know, Cal has changed quarterbacks during the season, and the passing game has still been anemic. Third and 11 now. Goes back the other way and sets up the screen to Ross, and Miami defended it well. Demarcus Van Dyke came up and made that play. You remember when California beat Oregon last year and Nate Longshore got hurt in that ball game? Sure. To me, he hasn't been the same quarterback since then. He it has been a rocky hurt. road, hasn't it? Oh, yeah. Now, we asked him yesterday, we said, Nate, where do you stand? He said, hey, I'm a better quarterback than I was two years ago. But the productivity, the numbers, the consistencies, 
It just hasn't been there. So Brian Anger on to punt. And Travis Benjamin set to return. Ball takes a bounce and goes out at the 31 yard line. So neither offense able to do their thing early on here in the second half. Miami's ball when we return 14 7 game. Well, all those years of watching baseball games here at AT&T Park and the Giants and the home runs going out over the right field wall and some McCovey Cove. Well, Brian Anger, the cow punter, had a little fun yesterday trying to do what all those big sluggers of the major leagues have done here at this main ballpark. Trying to send it over the wall and into the cove. For a big splash. That's For a big splash. Yeah, that's what Barry Bonds used to do. He'd get the ball into McCovey Cove and make a big splash. Corey Harris, fresh, true freshman quarterback for the Canes, trying to make a big splash here. A spotlight game for him. And now a little trickery as they give it back to Harris. And Harris winds up for Cooper. And it was almost intercepted as Cooper had to turn into a defensive back as Chris Conte tried to make a play on that ball. Yeah, Chris Conte, nickel back, involved, fifth defensive back. Watch how long this play takes to develop. And California does a very nice job of staying deep. If you look here, look at all the guys who are staying back. They have guys in coverage who did not bite. You'll see as Chris Conte comes into your view right there. He was back there along with Sidquan Thompson. They did not bite on the fake. They made a nice play. How about the fact that Cooper was the man who first touched the ball and ends up all the way downfield as the intended target? Harris over the middle and that ball is complete to Bird right to midfield and beyond for a first down a 20 yard game. How many throws and catches do you think those two have made together over the years in high school in their freshman year here at Miami. Ron Bird the freshman six foot four we told you we're in that number 47 it's like Michael Irvin once did. And a bright future with a young quarterback and a young receiver. You stack him with Aldarius Johnson. And here is Lee Chambers, the redshirt freshman, getting in. Well, Rod, you know, there's got to be an end to the rainbow, right? We showed you the punting over the wall, McCovey's Cove. Yep. You know, all the kayakers out there. Look at this. <laughs> this was a practice yesterday. <laughs> they are baseballs are trying to catch. Come on, Quint, catch one. That is Quint Kesnick, <laughs> and he hauled in one of the balls. <laughs> Reminds me of the uh, Major League All-Star game a few years ago here with all the kayakers out there. So just one of the unique. Uh, that's a good stuff. Charming settings here for the college bowl season. Harris now pressure from Alu Alu. And he gets it complete again, and this time he hooks up with Aldarius Johnson, who he did so many times in high school. Hey, Quint, good kayaking out there. Joe, let me tell you, first of all, the water was frigid. The folks at City Kayak hooked me up. I had all the, the gear. I felt like a pro. Once I was out there, though, it was almost like I was immobile. When the balls were kicked to the side, there was no way I could get them. Uh, if you come and watch the Giants play, you'll see the kayakers, they stay back, and then on a home run, they're watching on TV or listening on the radio. On a home run, they, you know, they, they move their kayaks forward to try to get the souvenirs. Well, Quint, all those years of being a star lacrosse goalie paying off with your stick play there. Looking for Johnson again, but it falls incomplete. But you can see Ja'Cory Harris just gaining confidence, his willingness to air it out now, Rod. Well, yeah, that play is one thing, but how about the previous play throwing over the middle? Now, Chris Conte is a big corner, 6'3", 200. Uh, yeah, Johnson's not going to out-jump him. Conte's going to play that. But you're right about Harris. He's taking chances now. He's throwing the ball over the middle, you know, moving to his right, throwing back to his left across the middle. That's danger zone. He got away with it. And now he's putting the ball up on fade routes, just assuming his guys will make the play. But Chris Conte is too big for that. Second down and 10. Conte actually broke his thumb in the Washington game and had surgery from the end of the regular season for this bowl game. And here's Chambers. And Lee Chambers driving ahead for a five yard gain. He was taken down by Mike Muhammad, who had an interception in the first half. And there's that's the uh, the broken thumb. That's why he wasn't able to uh, pick off two passes that he got his hands on. Now, Rod, you played 
College ball at Stanford in that position, cornerback. How hard is it to play with an injury like that wearing the protective and gear? I, could, I couldn't catch a ball with two hands. <laughs> two hands so. That's why you were on that yeah, side of the field, exactly. right? I don't know how you can do it with a thumb wrapped up like that. So a third and four. Collier in motion. First down, Chambers, and inside the 10 yard line. 18 yards from Lee Chambers. Oh, what a great job up front at the point of attack. Watch number 70 to the right of your screen right here. Watch that great block, and then watch the hole open up. There's a nice job done inside by Trump, number 70, A.J. Trump. Tremendous block and a great read by McNeil running in behind that. Also the coach's son, Xavier Shannon, in the center, getting in the mix there. A big A.J. Trump, a junior from Clearwater, Florida, paving the way there. Chambers again. Taken down by Warrell Williams, the linebacker for Cal, whose brother DJ Williams was a star linebacker at Miami. We got to whittle down his college choices between these two teams. Of course, DJ, great player for the Broncos. They got a big game coming up. Uh, test down here, Miami likes the fade route. They got a touchdown with one earlier. Remember, they're heading to that end zone where there's only a yard and a half before you hit that wall of what would be left field. Chambers again on the stretch. No running room as Williams rides him out, saddled up to Chambers and just drove him out of bounds. Uh, they chose to run to the short side of the field. And they're getting single coverage to the left side, but they don't like that. They think they have an advantage here. California doing a nice job of point of attack. Mike Muhammad holding the edge there at the linebacking spot, stretching that play out. Nothing there for Miami. Again, they like fade routes down here, but not a lot of room unless you want to run into the left field wall. Dave LeRon Bird to the top of the screen on third and goal. Harris with time over the middle and is caught for a touchdown by Collier. The Ron Collier with a touchdown catch. And how about the youngin, Ja'Cory Harris? I tell you what, he may very well be the starting quarterback next season for Miami. He's played with poise, he's thrown the ball with authority, and he just puts that one right on the money. You can just see the confidence, not only his, but his teammates' confidence in him as the game progresses. And now Matt Bosher to tie the game. And he does so. Since about halfway through the first quarter, this game has belonged to Miami. Momentum has been on their side. Youth is served. Ja'Cory Harris to Theron Collier. Tie game in San Fran. ESPN College Football, the Emerald Bowl, is brought to you by Emerald Nuts. Stay sharp at 3 p.m. with natural energy from Emerald Nuts. And by Pontiac. Vote now for the Pontiac Game Changing Performance of the Year at ESPN.com. Keyword Pontiac. Joe Tessitore, Rod Gilmore, and Quint Kesting. Now there's the Bay Bridge not far away from AT&T Park where we've got a tie ball game. Rod, that's not typically the traffic you get heading home, is it? Uh, that's 4 a.m. traffic. That's, that's, <laughs> <laughs> you're usually sitting there, sitting in that traffic, texting me about something yeah. college football-wise. Uh, and yeah. right now I think the thing everybody's buzzing about is Ja'Cory Harris. He just hooked up with Theron Collier to tie this game. The story on Harris, a true freshman from Northwestern High where he won the national championship of high school football, was unbeaten, and now start tonight because of the suspension of Robert Marv. And Jonathan Bess just slips and goes down there on the return. Uh, talking about Harris, I mean, yeah, his confidence since that completion to Hankerson, Hankerson that 41-yarder, he's been, he's been great. I mean, before that, he was three of six for four yards. 
since that completion 14 of 21 for 141 yards. Yeah, this looked like a game where Cal and Javid Best and the speedy linebackers they were going to get all over Miami. But Harris who's so calm so cool he hooked up with Hankerson in the second quarter for a 41 yarder and he's been hot ever since. Javid Best getting back to work. Here goes Javid Best. Trying to keep his balance, but he couldn't. To the 46 yard line. But a big burst again from Javid Best. He goes for 28 yards. Uh, it's that right side. We talked about it with the graphic. We showed you how he gets so much. And then he loves to cut back. Look at the great block he gets here. And how about Alex Mack over there? Clearing out a huge lane for him. Great blocking at the point of attack. And he was just a little bit away from breaking that one all the way. Big Alex Mack, the center, sealing that up. The Drady Award winner, the academic Heisman. Longshore now, he's pressured, but he goes over the middle and throws it short and incomplete of Jeremy Ross. And listen to this crowd. Uh, let's go back to that last play. You want to see a center do a great job. We showed you one angle. Now, Trump, watch this straight up. This is a center who is athletic, who uses his agility and great skill to just seal off someone inside. And that time he handles Dwayne Hendrick tremendously. That's why you're an All-America. That's why you're a Dreddy Award winner. That's why you're going to be a guy who's likely to be drafted in the second or third round. Great skill. Coaches say that you cannot say enough good things about Mac, both as a player and a person. And Miami is going to use a timeout early on here. As Mac leads the way for that offensive line of the Cal Bears. When Javid Best is running behind Mac, they are tough to stop. Tie ball game here in the Emerald Bowl. This telecast is available on ESPN and ESPN HD. Tie ball game here in San Fran. They were just talking about Alex Mack, the fine center for the Cal Bears. Let's take you back to December 9th at the Waldorf Astoria in New York. When he received the Dratty Award as college football's top scholar athlete, he's already earned his bachelor's degree in legal studies and currently pursuing a master's in education. He goes 6'4", 316, and he's given an education to the interior play of that Miami defensive line when they commit to that run with Javid Best. Here's Best now, trying to get to the outside, looking for room, and he slips down before the pursuit of Demarcus Van Dyke was able to contain him. Well, for Miami defensively, it's simple. Dare California to throw the football. Undoubtedly. I mean, you know, you can put 11 guys in the box, leave the receivers open, and see if they can actually complete it. Nate Longshore is just 7 of 18 for 95 yards. And keep in mind, Rod, that 74 of those yards came on one single play to Varan Tucker, where Tucker just got loose and ran for a good 64 of them. Yeah, they are struggling with the an understatement for the Cal passing attack. Right? Well, here's a test now for Longshore on third and ten. Has plenty of time. Gets it to Botang and a first down by Nyan Botang. Transferred to Cal from Florida. Played there as a true freshman for the Gators. And he is a very fine athlete when they get him involved. Yeah, they use a crossing route here. Clear out for him. And he just runs across the field. Longshore waits on him. Adds something that can get your confidence going. But they have to find a way to throw the ball. Otherwise, his offense will stall. You can't have job at best carry the ball every single play against a nine man front staring him in the face. So a fresh set of downs and right back to Javid Best and Best is wrapped up immediately by Ponder coming up from that strong safety position. Uh, you know as we have tracked Javid Best running the football he's been more effective running to the right side than running inside. Most of his yards have come to the right side off of that cutback at times of what Alex Mack does up front. Great block inside. He looks right, cuts back and runs off of Alex Mack. 136 yards for Best. Second and seven now. And Best unable to get past that initial surge as Adewale Ajomo 
A redshirt freshman from Hialeah, Florida, with a four yard loss of best. You know, I would really like to see California move best out of the backfield. They've done that on occasion this season where they split him out or they've shifted him out of the backfield lane and they've gotten him involved in the passing game or used him on reverses or trick plays. Uh, but you're going to have to find something other than the wide receivers to get the passing game going because it just hasn't been hitting. Best led the Pac-10 in all-purpose yards. And he's been the only answer for Cal tonight. And now Botang, as that ball is a catch at the 30-yard line, it'll be short of a first down. Brandon Harris had coverage. Yeah, and Botang is upset with himself because he didn't run the route deep enough. You know, he, one more yard. You know, it's a little comeback, curl and come back to the quarterback, does the right thing, but you got to run the route deep enough. They didn't, and now it's field goal time. They have a pretty good field goal kicker, a lot of confidence in his ability to nail. This will be a 47-yard attempt by Giorgio Tavecchio, and Miami. now a timeout by Miami. Team timeout. As they want to discuss seconds. things here, a fourth and one from the 30. So it's that portion of the field where you need to be very much aware defensively. Well, not only that, the, the field can get a little bit wet, drained here this week. You know, you worry about placing the ball, everything being clean, so you can get one up for a distance like this. And that's a 47 yarder. That's not an easy kick. Well, the final four nominees for the Pontiac Game Changing Performance of the Year, Rod. You can log on to ESPN.com, search Pontiac, check them out, cast your vote. You know, there's some pretty good ones there. You know, that Buffalo 35 yard pass is something else. How about Texas? Texas Tech, Crabtree, Alabama, the pick in the end zone. All right, so do this for me. What's your number one? Oh, well, you know, for me, my number one is is really right here. I mean, it's it's Crabtree making that catch. <laughs> I can remember sitting back watching that game with you. I think we were doing a <laughs> Sunday night game. You yep. jumped through the hotel room. Right. So they're going to go for it now on fourth and one. And now Longshore is going to call a timeout. And I can't believe the reaction from his own teammates. Yeah. Norris Malele, the right guard, number 55, just so frustrated, almost disgusted yeah. when he heard the timeout. Yeah, he waved his hands, you know, just he frantically ticked off. And how about Tedford? Tedford wasn't happy. I mean, I think Longshore looked up and saw the play clock going down. Didn't have enough time. There you see right there, Norris Malele. Expressing his frustration. Well, you know, you start to wonder with all the shuffling and musical chairs at the quarterback position and things that have happened. I mean, there's it has been public knowledge written up in the papers that there has been a strained relationship between Longshore and Tedford. Longshore explains that everybody wants the most success they can have in their career and their playing days, but things get a little ugly and testy in times like this. Well, yeah, I think Tedford wants to have a good relationship with them, and, and the frustration is that, you know. Things haven't worked out for Longshore and you know, the way he wanted them to. So here's fourth and one. Right thing to do to go for it here. And the right guy to give it to Best to the edge. And John and Best fighting his way inside the 10-yard line. <laughs> Is he a treat to watch or what? Tack out another 25 yards to his total. Uh, he does a great job, but you know, to run outside, you have got to get a block on the edge. He gets a block on the edge and a seal, and that's all she wrote. If she, if, if you get the block on the edge, job at best will get you every single time. That was a great job on the edge. Great blocking by Tad Smith, who goes in about 6'5", 265. Well, he is the offense tonight. 158 yards from best. motion now and that came from the left side and it was Tad Smith who had just made that yep. fine block on that full start yep. number 44 offense five-yard penalty remains first down and Tad Smith made the great block that freed job at best to get to the edge probably so pumped up and excited about it, he couldn't wait to hit somebody else look to the left side you'll see him jump right there that's a no-no 
Cal's first penalty of the night. So now back to the 10 yard line. Bess looking for that lead block, looking for the end zone, and he's just short. Inside the one yard line goes Javid Bess. Now, any test, if you think his game is all about speed, you're mistaken. And Javid Bess is a tough runner. I mean, watch him fight here at the end. He tries to finish this run. Yeah, he's got a hole. Now, watch him lower the shoulder, finish the run. He doesn't get knocked sideways, doesn't get knocked backwards. He finishes the run against Ryan Hill. Second and goal now. Tenth play of this drive. Ross is in motion. Here's Best. And Miami able to get to him that time. As Ryan Hill came up along with Alan Bailey. And Calby facing a third and goal. Yeah, and they're going heavy set, bringing in more tight ends here. And I, and I think you know, that long run to get to the huddle you know, eats up some time. They're down to 20 seconds on this play clock, so they got to hurry up and get out of the huddle. Remember, both teams on the same sideline here because of the configuration of this being a baseball park and Cal on the opposite side of where their team is. So that heavy package, those big guys have to run a long way to get there. Here's third and goal. Riley stumbles and falls back. Excuse me, Longshore stumbles and falls back. He and the night stumbled. continues for the Cal quarterback who just can't get anything going his way, and the crowd reacts again. Yeah, he just got stepped on. One of his linemen looked like it was either Boscovich or Matt who stepped back and got on it. Boy, does that just sum up the year the quarterback play for Cal, be it Kevin Riley or Nate Longshore? Stumbling back. So in comes Giorgio Tavecchio from 23 yards out. And the lefty puts it through. So job at best with the conversion of the fourth down. Gets him down, knock it on the door, but on third down, Longshore stumbles back and they have to settle for three, but nonetheless, Cal takes the lead. Good game here tonight in San Fran, and Capital One Bowl Week will continue Monday on ESPN with two games, NC State and Rutgers in the Papa John's.com Bowl, then at 8 Eastern, the Valero Alamo Bowl, Mizzou and Northwestern. Robbie, very interesting to see Chase Daniel and the gang back after what happened in the Big 12 to close out the year. You know they're looking to crank it up down there in the Valero Alamo Bowl. Yeah, there'll be a lot of points in that one. I'm also interested in watching North Carolina State. Rutgers really coming back this season, but when you think about North Carolina State and the ACC, you know, the reputation not so good this season. So the bowl season, very important for the ACC to establish itself, to play well. Well, Florida State played very well today, as did North Carolina, but West Virginia. Oh, West Virginia was Pat really Whoa. on today. That was a sensational game between the Mountaineers and the Tar Heels. Florida State rocked Wisconsin. And now an opportunity for the ACC to shine here if Miami can get something going here in the late goings against Cal, a Cal team that everybody talked about as having the home field advantage here in the Bay Area and the superior veteran talent. Here's Brandon Harris looking for something, turns it around, and then goes back up that same near side, but is taken down just over the 20 by Charles Amati. Yeah, the California quarterback situation this season has been handled by Longshore on the left, Riley on the right. And Riley was the starter most of the season. In fact, Longshore had not started the previous four ball games before getting the start tonight. Jeff Tedford, of course, has coached six quarterbacks who have been first-round NFL draft choices. Dilford, Card, Fresno, Killy Smith, Joey Harrington at Oregon. And right here at Cal, Bowler and Aaron Rodgers. So he's not used to the inconsistencies at quarterback. You know, and, and for those folks 
Get an illegal substitution. Got 12 players on the offense. That's a five-yard penalty. Remains first down. It, for those folks who are calling for Riley to come back into the ball game, and you know, they may have forgotten that, you know, Riley didn't exactly light it up, you know, his last four games. Now that USC game, he was coming off a concussion against Oregon. It was only 4 of 16. But look at Oregon State, 11 of 25. Against Stanford, didn't throw it much. Against Washington, they ran the Huskies out, and he was only 3 of 7. So under or right around 50% passing in his last four ball games. Greg Cooper and Cooper with a big burst up the middle out to the 31 just short of that first down marker taken down by Marcus Ezef. Well, Miami has outplayed California in this ball game today. You know, but for the start that Javid Best had in that first quarter, you know, Miami has had control of the game. You know, certainly passing and certainly their defense. You know, since that first quarter. Well, there's the Cal production today. Yeah. Javid Best. Yep. 167 yards, two touchdowns in the first half, and then a key big gainer on that last possession as they measure here. And it is just short of the first down. And you think about Javid Best and 1,400 yards rushing this year, and he missed a game and a half. And coming off a season where you know, he was banged up with a bad hip last year and it lingered this season into other injuries, what might he do next season completely healthy? Well, jo Javid Best has to be on the short oh. list of Heisman candidates I, I, for I, next year. He might run for 2,000 yards next season. Now, much like J.J. Arrington did, and Marshawn Lynch was sensational, but they say of all the great backs that they've had there at Cal, Javid is the fastest. Oh, it's not even close. End of three quarters here at AT Park as a field goal separates them. A big night for Javid Best, but Miami and Ja'Cory Harris full of confidence. Which way will it go? Should be a good one down the stretch. Stay with us. The eight Emerald Bowl, part of ESPN's presentation of Capital One Bowl Week at a sold-out AT&T Park, home of the Major League Baseball San Francisco Giants, and home to a heck of a football game tonight between Cal and Miami. As Cal's Javid Best has put on a show, and Miami's true freshman quarterback Jacory Harris is grown up in front of our eyes. Second and one now for the Canes. Cooper fumbles the ball. But able to fall on it, a flag comes down. Hold it, hold. Hey, the officials already signal holding against Miami. It looks like Miami recovered the fumble. Holding, offense, number 55. That's a 10 yard penalty. Remains second down. Randy Shannon's son, Xavier, coach's son with the holding there. On the second and one. What do you say to dad when you make a mistake? You, you don't go back to the sideline. You, you walk. You know that 60-yard walk we're talking about because they're so far away with the configuration here at the ballpark? You walk 70 yeah. yards. Yeah. You walk an extra 10 yards away from them. Wait till I get you home, son. Yep, this one comes out right away. Cooper can't hang on to it, but he scrambles to get it back. Great hustle play. So it goes from second and one to second and 11 here. And they still go with Cooper. And he plows ahead to the 26 yard line, a six yard game. Well, Ja'Cory Harris has really been his story for Miami's offense tonight. The backup quarterback has become the front line guy. Once he hit Hankerson for that long pass of 41 yards, his confidence grew. He made every throw, whether he was on the move or sitting in the pocket, including a touchdown pass to the Ron Collier. He's been the main guy because the running game hasn't been there, but it's been his arm that's kept Miami in this ballgame. He rallied Miami to an overtime win at Virginia on a 15 play drive. Now looking for a rally here, and that is incomplete. Nearly picked off by Warrell Williams. He was trying to get it to Collier, 
Yeah, it's the worst pass he's thrown tonight. He threw it behind him. Makes you think that somebody went the wrong way. But he threw it inside. Collier went outside. And sometimes that, that miscommunication happens on an option route. And Collier, if he had the option, he chose to go outside when Harris thought he would go inside. Yeah, Rel Williams, who grew up rooting for Miami because Big Bro was a star linebacker there. DJ. Takes a Kane's bounce. A flag is down in the backfield near the punter. Let's see what the call is here. No. Running in. Running into the kicker, number 25. Well, that that might be enough. I think it is to give him a first down. And this is oh, like a turtle. This should be enough. Running into the kicker. The five yard penalty. Brett Johnson with a costly penalty on special teams. So Miami catches a break as Bosher, they ran into him, and the offense will head back out into the field. That doesn't go in the books as a turnover, but it's the same impact. Absolutely. And you go from Cal having the ball on their own 30 to Miami retaining possession at their 31. Now Xavier Shannon. The coach's son is breathing a sigh of relief after the penalty had backed up his team when they had things headed in the right direction, and now the Canes back out there. They need to throw more on first down. And they will try to here. Follett was trying to chase down Harris. And he's just going to let this one go into what would be center field here at this baseball stadium. The pressure came from Follett. Yeah, the, the fans are booing. It's a partisan crowd. Cal fans who made the trip 12 miles to get here <laughs> wanted a throwing a rough a throwing the ball away uh, penalty here and fall it trying to get there. Kept falling down as Rutledge did a nice little job on him, almost tackling him. A de facto home game here for the Cal fans. Zach Fowl is such an interesting character. Loved having him wired up, mic'd up in the pregame. He said it's time to ride the pain train. <laughs> what is that? He didn't care about his body. It's his last game. Harris now sprinting away from that pressure and gets it complete to Benjamin for a first down. So a good look at what Harris is able to do when you get him out of that pocket. Quint mentioned that that was the intention here. And what did Harris tell us yesterday? He said, I don't get nervous. The pressure doesn't bother me. I just go play. Well, that's what he's been doing since about midway through the first quarter. He's just been playing. Whether he's in the pocket or rolling out of it or scrambling, he hasn't lost his composure at any point in time. Fresh set of downs for the Canes. Running into the punter. And then the completion. Harris to Travis Benjamin. Changing and now changing up the play here with under 10 seconds to go on the play clock. Chambers. He has running room. Gets to the edge. And Lee Chambers is becoming a bit of a factor here. Ten yard gain there. Hey, taken you, down by Ezef. Yeah, you know, Tess, I mentioned earlier that Miami needed to throw more on first down. Well, part of that was because Cal was kind of loading up to stop the run. They change the play this time when they see that Cal is bringing a blitz inside. Nice recognition, great audible by Harris to change to a running play to get outside of where the pressure was coming. Quarterback Robert Marv suspended. Ja'Cory Harris, the true freshman, gets his second start. And he has come up big since the second quarter. Chambers again. Good blocking out in front. And Chambers with a burst down the sideline inside the 30 and a flag comes in late. That was a good block by Chris Zellner. On Brent Johnson the safety for Cal. Let's see how they clean things up here at the end of this play. Zellner had Johnson on skates going the wrong way. Yeah, that is not anything you want to see on tape. <laughs> Following the play, dead ball, personal foul, the defense. Dead ball, personal foul on the offense. Those penalties offset. 
is on the play. First down. So things neutralize there, and the run will hold up. So a little bit of a smile out of Coach Shannon. As his team here, his offense finding their stride in the fourth quarter against a very talented Cal defense. I know Miami only has 14 points, but it feels like they've controlled things offensively for about two quarters now. It does. I mean, Cal jumped out to that 14 zip lead where they were rolling with best, but Miami has found their stride. And now Harris connects with the fullback Hill, and Hill is out. At about the 23 yard line. Well, Rob, let me tell you how I plan next week. I'm going to host that New Year No Limits motorcycle jump in Vegas, and then I am super gluing myself to a couch come New Year's Day. I mean, Penn State, USC. Yeah. Lock me in, man. Yeah. Yeah. Coverage begins at 4 30. The 09 Rose Bowl game presented by City. It's going to be a great one. Yeah, and everybody knows about that USC defense, but, you know, Penn State's offense, they're bringing something to the party. This game is going to be a lot better. A lot closer than people think. Second and four now. Play action. Harris, plenty of time downfield and has it complete. And once again, he goes to LaRon Bird, the six foot four freshman target. Well, they do a nice job of moving him away from the pressure. They get him out of the pocket, which gives him the ability to have a nice view of Bird on this out route as he comes back to him he's got an unobstructed view of bird because they moved him out of the pocket and california has not gotten any hits on harris in quite a while how relaxed is this kid playing this position now? well you know yeah i mean you know first quarter they were banging him around they have not been close to him in quite a while now. first and goal To pass again. Zellner, the tight end, trying to cut back against the grain, but there was not much running room at all. Well, I think you have to give a lot of credit to Patrick Nick, the offensive coordinator, for changing things up, for moving the launch point for the quarterback, moving him left, moving him right, and also making sure that he's mixing it up on first down. And he got away from running it on first down to loosen up the Cal defense. He kind of got a beat on what they were doing defensively, and now Miami has been rolling for a while. Of course, Patrick Nix, best known as the starting quarterback for some great Auburn teams back in the early 90s. And now watching the maturing and development of a young quarterback here with the Canes. To the corner of the end zone for Bird. Off his fingertips. Incomplete. Sid Quan Thompson going toe to toe with LaRon Bird. And you know, it's all about matchups. They like to throw the fade. This is not the right matchup. Sid Quan Thompson plays the ball in the air very well. You can run the fade, but you got to run it to the other side. You can't do it on this guy. He's going to fight and scrap with the balls in the air. That's why he's a first team, all Pac 10 defensive back. Big Cal crowd trying to generate some noise at the beautiful ballpark by the bay on third and goal. Harris, the rush is on over the middle. Benjamin, he cannot shake free, taken down at the five yard line by Chris Conte. Cal did a nice job of bringing pressure, but sitting in the zone and reading the quarterback's eyes. You know, one of the great things that, Russ, that Harris has done is he hasn't really turned over the football since that one pick. A lot of pressure there. Cal sitting in the zone, but still a nice safe pass preserves the field goal opportunity to tie the game. And here's the young man who had the breakout season. They named him the team MVP, and now the pressure on Matt Bosher. It was short chip shot, 22 yarder to tie the game. And he just sneaks it through. So another clutch drive from Ja'Cory Harris, the true freshman, leads them down the field. Tack on the field goal, and we're all tied up in San Fran. Joe Tessitore, Rod Gilmore, Quint Kesnick with you in San Fran. We got a good one here in the Emerald Bowl, 17-17, fourth quarter. 
May we have good ones come Tuesday as Capital One Bowl Week continues. The Blue Turf's going to feature Maryland and Nevada in the Rhodes Humanitarian Bowl at 4.30. Then at 8 Eastern, the Pacific Life Holiday Bowl, Oklahoma State and Oregon. Capital One Bowl Week continues Tuesday on ESPN. And let me give you a player to watch here. Nevada quarterback Colin Kaepernick. If you haven't seen him play the position, he's like watching uh, Pat White. Very, very slick, almost yeah. NBA slashing yeah. forward yeah, play he, quarterback. He reminds me of Pat White of uh, West Virginia a bit. And, and I think uh, Colin Kaepernick is going to get a lot of attention next season. You know, people didn't know much about him this year, but he'll he'll show up next year. And they open up with ND, I believe, next year. Javid Best from the six. And Best with a decent return to set up the Cal offense here. 9.08 left in regulation. Tie game at the Emerald Bowl. ESPN College Football, the Emerald Bowl, is brought to you by Emerald Nuts. Stay sharp at 3 p.m. with natural energy from Emerald Nuts. By Capital One Card Lab at CapitalOne.com. What's in your wallet? And by the Volkswagen Signed and Drive event. German engineering for practically just a signature. Beautiful shot there of Union Square all lit up for the holidays here in downtown San Francisco. Joe Tessitore, Rod Gilmore, Quint Kesnick at the Emerald Bowl, a game that has lived up to the hype. People thought it would be a very good matchup of a young Miami team that's coming around and trying to get themselves back to national prominence and a Cal team loaded with talent. And here's the most talented of them all, Javid Best breaking free again. The big night continues for Best, 29 yards on that run. Yeah, he got up slowly at the end of that run and he's walking toward the sidelines, though. But we talked about his ability to run through tackles. He's got great acceleration. Arm tackling him really doesn't work because of the speed. And he blows through arm tackles. There were six missed tackles on Javid Best tonight. Best up to 187 yards on 19 carries, and you can see him off on the sideline there as they are tending to him. So Shane Vereen comes in, dot in the eye, Longshore hands off to Vereen, and he's got some speed too. Out to the 45. Let's look at how best came down at the end of this last play, Rod. Yeah, a little bit awkward. Comes down on that left elbow and looks like his right hand. And that elbow is the one that he dislocated. He's been dealing with the elbow, the ankle, the foot. This offseason, it was the hip. They contemplated surgery for best. So they are checking out that right hand. And that's the best news the Miami defense could ever have. When he has been in the game and they commit to him, unstoppable. And now Shane Vereen getting his opportunity. Glad you're with us here at AT&T Park, home of baseball San Francisco Giants, reconfigured for this Emerald Bowl. I'm Joe Tessitore alongside Rod Gilmore. Quinn Kessler with us down. On the sidelines, Miami. Well, second year coach Randy Shannon has him back in a bowl. Jeff Tedford, of course, the head coach for Cal. So much success over the course of the last seven years, but some saying, is this the start of Miami building themselves back up, or does Cal just have too much talent and this de facto home field advantage? So far, it's been a dandy. Here's Marine again. And now he catches a seam down the sidelines with Javi Best out of the game. Shane Vereen starting to shine. Well, Vereen is starting to do something, but really, it's been Best and Harris tonight. Mano a mano. Best breaking off big runs as we expected he would. He's done that all season long. He's been the entire offense for California. And then all of a sudden, you also have Harris coming out of the backup row as a starter and making big plays in the passing game for Miami tonight. First down for Nate Longshore in the Cal offense and back to Vereen they go. And once again, he's fighting for positive yardage to the 21. Let's check in with Quint. 
Joe, Cal training staff and doctors feverishly working on the right thumb of Javid Best. Uh, earlier, he was biting on his mouthpiece in pain. It looks like they're rewrapping. They took off his glove. It looks like they're rewrapping his hand to see if they can get him back in the ball game. But Quint with the latest there on Best. This is how it happened after a 20 yard gainer. And he had both arms around the football goes down on the left side you can see the right hand was underneath the ball as he went to the ground with a couple of guys on him. Vereen gets the call again keeps his balance and then is wrapped up a little pain party down there as Marcus Forson and Antonio Dixon getting in on that play. Shane Green is a pretty good running back, but this guy, Javid Best, is outstanding. Look where he ranks. You know, in single season rushing among Cal running backs, ahead of Justin Forsett, behind J.J. Arrington, ahead of uh, Marshawn Lynch. And Jeff Tedford has had a thousand yard rusher in each of his first seven seasons. Now, Marshawn Lynch, J.J. Arrington, some of the greats to come through. Now, third and one. Vereen again this time on the pitch. And he is marked short of the first down as the senior Glenn Cook who leads the team in tackles. The team captain and one of the real leaders of this very young defense comes up big. Well you know when you have a lead blocker out there like Kyle Foa, you've got issues but Miami handled it well. Cook doing a nice job. The speed of Miami's defense showing up and as tempted as Tedford might have been to go for it on fourth down, this is the right call. You got to kick the field goal to go ahead with four and a half minutes in the ball. Game. So that tackle by Cook sends Giorgio Tavecchio out to try to break this tie from 34. And it is no good. Freshman who joined the team just three days before the season opener had a chance to make the kick of the year for him. And he came up short. Still tied in San Fran. Here's tonight's Harley Davidson clutch moment. We're going to take you back to 2003, the Insight Bowl. It was Cal's first bowl game under Jeff Tedford. And Virginia Tech's Brian Randall had a four touchdown night. Tech erased a 14 point deficit. They tied the game at 49 49, but Cal quarterback Aaron Rodgers would lead a field goal drive. And the Golden Bears would win it 52 49. And we got a exciting one here tonight coming down to possibly a similar ending. Lower scoring, defense has played a key role as we've watched the emergence of young Ja'Cory Harris. The quarterback for Miami to pass on first down and that is overthrown. He was trying to go to his old high school teammate Al Darius Johnson. Now, I still like the idea of throwing the ball on first down because Cal loads up the box on him. Just a little bit out of range. Now in the second half of this ball game, Lee Chambers has been a big running back for Miami. 59 yards on seven carries. He might be the option here on second down to shorten that distance for getting a first down. Just 420 to go in regulation. Here is Chambers. And only managing a couple of yards there. Well you want to talk about Harris in the clutch the true freshman we'll take it back to November 1st at Virginia rallying the Hurricanes sending it deep here on the scramble to LaRon Bird. That tied things up with under a minute to play. Then in overtime, to Aldarius Johnson helping the Canes win 24 17. He likes the clutch time, he prefers the pressure. We're talking about a quarterback who's won two high school state championships, an overtime game in his freshman season, and also a coming of age game against Duke in which he threw four touchdown passes to bring his team back. Now on third down, a little too much pressure. Ball is loose, scooped up, and wrapped out of bounds. Cameron Jordan picked it up. The pressure came off the edge. And Harris couldn't hold on as Zach Follett came crashing in. And then Cameron Jordan came up with a big play for the Bears. Uh, 
it's Zach Follett making the play. And watch the left side of your screen. Watch him as he gets separation and beats his man and forces the play. The ball held a little bit too loosely by Harris, but Zach Follett made the play, and Rulon Davis comes up with it, but it's all about Zach Follett coming up with a big play for California. And look who's back in the field. That right thumb wrapped up and ready to go as they're going to review the last play, but Javid Best, he wants a piece of this action as they could be knocking on the door of a lead here. Zach Follett. He's got a 10 tackle, two sack, night working here. He said, hey, this is my last go round, my last game. I don't care about my body. I'm laying it out there tonight. So the official review on the sack of Harris to see if he was down before the ball came loose. Looks like that is a fumble. It didn't look like his knee was down before the ball came out. Watch it from this angle. Looks like he gets stripped right here. Balls out before his knee touches down. I think that that play is going to be confirmed. Remember you need conclusive evidence to overturn the call on the field. You know these bowl game experiences are very unique because yesterday I was sitting at a at the luncheon next to Zach Follett who was seated next to Ja'Cory Harris, and he said at one point, he said, I plan on being even closer to him tomorrow. <laughs> he can't get much closer than he just did. He picked up that steak knife <laughs> and dug in and said, I'm going to be closer to him tomorrow. He was right there. And Zach Follett talked about this being his last game. Well, it may be his last college game, but he is going to have a real opportunity to play in the NFL. He's benefited greatly from this change to the 3 4 defense. Yeah, there's another look at that look. You know, you look at the right knee. Was the right knee down before the ball comes out? And that ball's coming out as he's going down. To me, that's a fumble. That's a California football. After review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. It's a fumble. He said he was going to hop on board the pain train, and that's a painful look on Miami fans. Costly turnover. Yeah, California, though, has to be careful. Javis Best, remember, you know, has the bad thumb. He hurt the last time he was out there. If you run Best down here, you can make sure he secures the football. He hasn't had a chance to practice carrying that ball. He got taped up and came back in. A lot of stuff happens around the goal line. He's going to have to have two arms around it. First and goal. Here's Best. He stopped there. His armor came up. As did Robinson. Quint, what did you see with Javid Best in that injury? Well, they taped up his right wrist and thumb. He didn't like the way the tape felt against the ball on the sideline, so he put a second glove over that tape. Keep in mind, he wears the uh, elbow brace on his dislocated elbow, and now he's got the bad hand. Uh, ball security could be an issue. Good observation, Quint. That can play to the confidence in the back and this goal line situation too. Here's second and goal now. Long short of pass. Touchdown Cal. Best was best, but then when they wanted it, they went to Long Shore. And he went to Anthony Miller for the score. But keep your eye on number five, Mora. And where is he throwing the ball? It looks like he was trying to go to Mora, or Mora got in the way of it, but instead he gets it to Anthony Miller, you know, the freshman from San Jose, for the touchdown. He is a freshman who they use in the goal line packages. A lot of receivers in that area. I thought he was looking at Mora. And Sadecchio. Moments ago, he missed the field goal that could have given them the lead, but the defense stepped up. Zach Follett with the sack, the forced fumble. Cameron Jordan sco scooped it up, and then Miller scores it here. That's just 
sounds like a Rose Bowl USC and Penn State we're looking forward to that one and this has been a very entertaining one here in San Fran playing for that Emerald Bowl trophy and the hometown fans Cal just 12 miles away enjoying the lead right now as Anthony Miller just hauled it in from Nate Longshore after the turnover forced by Zach Follett and scooped up by Cameron Jordan by the Cal defense. Travis Benjamin from the 12. Benjamin trying to find some running room out across the 30. And Tess, let's go back to the touchdown pass to Anthony Miller. You know, he's situated right here. He's going to make his way to the back of the end zone right there. And you're going to have Mora come this way. I think Longshore sees Miller and the, in the back of the end zone. He's got two guys there. I think he spots him right here. But Mora's right there as well. Mora almost catches that ball or almost deflects it before it gets to Miller because they had so many guys in the same area. But I think Longshore saw Miller along the back line. What a roller coaster ride it's been for Nate Longshore. Could that be the game decider in his senior year? And Miami going to the run here with just two and a half minutes left in the game. Lee Chambers and once again Zach Follett coming up big. Well, you know, you, you really got to start moving. 222 to go here. One timeout. You, you really shouldn't be running the ball right now. You, you gotta you gotta start running. Your quarterback has been really good handling that. True freshman Ja'Cory Harris. Now he slings it and gets it complete to Zellner, but that's a minimum gain on what was second and 11. It'll bring up a third and six as Mike Muhammad, fine linebacker for Cal with the tackle there. Yeah, they need to manage the clock now. They should have a play call. They should be at the line of scrimmage. They only have one timeout, so uh, time can run off quickly. They have to be more efficient. Third and six. Clock. Down to 141. Harris, little screen. And Chambers is short of a first down. Cameron Jordan able to secure him. Yeah, but you know, you got to go for it here, and you should have a play. If you don't have a play, it's worth the call a timeout. But they should have a play that they can use now. But don't waste the entire clock. No, they're taking a lot of time. Too much nine time. yards of offense here Too in these last time. few plays. So here's fourth and one. Jacory to the air, complete for a first down to Zellner. But that clock down to a minute right now. Now they'll get the clock stopped as they measure. You see Zellner just slip out to the outside, clearly picking up the first down. You see our first down marker there. Too long. Running now. Too long. Harris taking a lot of time. He is pressured. Gonna run it himself. Stays in bounds as he was starting to lose control of the ball. Secured it for five yards. Miami only with a timeout left. Remember, they called two timeouts in the third quarter. And that's a young mistake. You need to throw that football away. It's not worth to pick up four or five yards running the ball. You're better off throwing the ball away and stopping the clock. Now they're burning through all this time and they have one time out. They're making this tougher than it needs to be. What a favor they're doing for Cal. Harris. Now he just airs it out. But only 12 seconds left in the game. They burned about 35, 40 seconds there to get six yards on a rushing play. You just have to be better in your two minute offense. There's nothing more important than managing the clock, using your timeouts, and making sure your quarterback is prepared to handle the last two minutes of a ball game. Well, now he's calling a timeout. Timeout. Well, with that Miami. opportunity, let's take a look at tonight's Future Start Pros brought timeout. to you by Yellow Book. You know, we've talked timeout. about Miami and their ability to, you know, come back and what they used to be. Is is Miami back? Well, you know, you look at a couple guys that they have and look at draft picks. The California's Alex Mack is going to be a second or third round pick. You know, some people consider him the best center out there. But Bruce Johnson is a cornerback. And he's the best or most likely draftable senior for Miami. 
and he's probably going to be somewhere in the fourth, fifth, sixth round. Todd McShay, you know, our ESPN.com guy, has looked at all this stuff, and, and he feels that Bruce Johnson is a fifth-round guy or a little bit later. What does that say about what Miami has become? You know, we're used to seeing them have several draft picks. And Four, 14 straight years yeah. they've had a first-round draft pick. Yeah, and they won't have one this year. I don't believe they will have one this year unless something unique happens. But those two guys are the, the likeliest draft draftable guys, Alex Mack and Bruce Johnson of Miami. Now the good news for the Canes is that you see all the freshman talent on the field tonight. You've seen what Harris has done. We've highlighted some of the freshman receivers. Number one recruiting class in the country hit the field this year, and they're working on a top ten class coming up for the signing period. And Shannon, Coach Shannon is committed to the future. A little baptism by fire, getting out there on the field and improving things now. But the time management in the past couple minutes hasn't worked their way. Just 12 seconds to go. Harris, pressure right up the middle from Alou Alou. Downfield and complete. No, that is incomplete. Hankerson had it right at him. Made a good stab at it, but it goes incomplete. Coming up next after this game will be Sports Center. And they're going to take a look at the best bowl game so far, as well as Pat White for West Virginia, his perfect record in the postseason. And a little added pressure on Tony Romo. That is coming up. Five seconds to go. Coach Randy, Randy Shannon's first bowl game for the Canes. Jeff Tedford looking for a solid postseason win here. Uh, Randy Shannon would like to have some of that time back that they lost on this drive. Harris. And he goes down, laterals it. And Cooper still on his feet before he is tackled and pushed by Mike Muhammad. There out of bounds. As Cal celebrates the Bay Area team in their backyard. A sold out AT&T Park with most of the fans wearing that blue and gold on a night when Javid Best was a star again. The Capital One player of the game going for a buck 86 and a couple of scores. He's as good as advertised, and I still believe he is the most explosive running back in college football. Only a sophomore. He's, got, he's in line to have a big season next year, and California is in line to be a pretty good team next season as well. Head down to the field, and Quint Kessnick. Quint. Coach Tedford, you nearly put that game away early. It got very interesting late. What ultimately made the difference? Well, our defense played very well. The turnover was a big thing. Uh, total team effort. Uh, got a lot of respect for Miami's team. Coach Shannon and their staff does a great job. They got a lot of athletes over there. So, But the defense really stepped up. How do you best characterize the play of uh, Javid Best? Well, he's got a lot of heart. You know, there's no question uh, that he has ability and talent, but the guy's got tremendous heart. For you, six consecutive bowl games. Your record in those games, 5-1. and one. What does that say about the program at Cal? Well, it says that we have we have great players and great people. You know, our, our staff. I you know I got to give it to our staff. Our staff does a great job of preparing these guys and putting them in a position to win. And our guys play very very hard. Thanks, coach. Congratulations. Thank you, Joe. Thanks, Quint. Job at best. What a night for him, as well as Alex Mack, the academic All-American, opening up those holes. 186 yards and a couple of scores. And he is definitely a player to watch next year in college football. Our final score from the Emerald Bowl, Cal 24 to 17 in an entertaining game. For more on this game, you can tune in to ESPN News. Rod and I will have a post game extra. Coming up next here on ESPN at Sports Center for Rod Gilmore, Quint Kesnick, and our entire crew. I'm Joe Tessitore. Thanks for watching. Cal a winner here in San Fran.